How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode episode number 19 headed into the 2028 postseason here in year number five. In the last one it was a descent into madness on my part as after going 26 13 and 2 in the first half of the season on pace for 52 wins we went 16 20 and 5 in the second half of the season from the second best team in the NHL to finishing 15th in the league just squeaking into the postseason in a wild card spot with a record of 42 33 and 7. We had a great power play, a great penalty kill, but our even strength scoring completely and totally just vanished. To try and help out what was going on, we made some trades in the last one. The big acquisition of Mark Stone was one of them. We also traded for Zach Hyman, as you can see down there in the names, as well as a goaltending, not a change because he was still not fully our starter, but Hunter Jones came in to try and help out what was going on. I'll quickly just break down the season that was if you did not get to see last episode or this past season here in year number five. Mark Stone was acquired by us around the halfway point, a little bit past it. He was over point per game on a very bad Vegas squad. We acquired him. I believe he had scored something like 11 points in 21 games in the middle six. And then he scored, I think it was 10 points in the next 11 games as a first liner. So since he's been on the first line, he's been good. In total, 21 points in 32 games here in Vancouver as a negative four. Aside from that, we see that things start to go down drastically. Last season, we had players scoring in the 80s. We had 30 goals, 40 goals. Maybe not 40, but we did have multiple 30-goal scorers last season. As we see, Elise Patterson was our only at 32 goals. A 71-point season from our 93 overall franchise centerman. Of, is it a career low since 2021-22? Really rough season from him. He hasn't been great in the simulation at all, really. Not really reflecting who he is in the real world. 71 points and negative 7, ending the season as a negative for the first time in his career. So tough year from Elias Pettersson on that top line. Kuzmenko, he was on a better pace in the first half, but definitely slowed down. We've been upset with Kuzmenko because he's been an 82-plus point scorer in the first three years. Last year, 60 points. This year, through the first half, he's on pace for 66. He slowed down, ended with 60 again. But but this time as a negative 13, even getting a lot of power play points. So even strength, he has been just as bad. So Kuzmenko, definitely a candidate to move out in the offseason. But we'll get to that in the comments in a moment. Zach Hyman, we acquired him from the Pittsburgh Penguins, another losing team, another expiring contract we wanted to pick up. 13 points in 20 games, which was great, but a negative 10. So just the negatives are not clicking anywhere for the forwards. And none of our defense have that bad of a plus minus. It's really just odd plus minuses throughout the lineup for the forwards. JT Miller had a tough year as well. 59 points from him. He's been a 70, 80 point guy. Again, another career, not a career low, but the lowest that he's put up in many, many years as he has a 59 point season as a negative seven to boot. Sam Reinhardt, 58 points. It's kind of what we've come to expect from him up and down to the 50s and the 60s. We still would have wanted to see a little bit more, but Sam Reinhardt, 58, wasn't atrocious. At Turatu, after he scored 60 plus last year, he had 54 this year. Again, it's acceptable. A huge shock and definitely something that cannot be accepted is Quinn Hughes scoring 53 points and being a negative 19. Coming off of back-to-back -back Norris trophies, 91 points, 82 points, plus 20s, all that good stuff. 53 points and a negative 19 from the captain. Still getting the same amount of ice time and everything, but like 30 less points and what, like negative 40 worse than last year? Come on now, Quinn. So that was a big shock to the system. Kopitar, 48 at 40 years of age. Hronik, 43. LeCaire Mackey, 39 in his sophomore year. A little bit of improvement from his rookie season. But Colson, 28. Hannafin, 28. Callum Ritchie's rookie season, 25. Not too bad in bottom six role. Willander, 21. Anderson Dolan, 18. Rasmus Ristolainen, our dear beloved son, 15 points. Jared McIsaac was a big surprise. 8 points and a plus 15 as a 79 overall. Thank you. Susie, 5 points, negative 3 in 26 games. And Coleman, 4 points in 26 games. Now, looking at at the goaltending, we did have to move out King Arthur. It was a heartbreaker to move out Silovs. We could always revisit him in the future, but we picked up Hunter Jones, who was festering away in the AHL with the Iowa Wild as an 84 overall. We picked him up. He has appeared in 13 games as a Canuck, going 6-5 and 2 with one shutout, 904 save percentage, and 2.84 goals against average. Not horrible, especially considering what our goaltending situation has been. Uko Pekka Lukanen, 8-9 and 
two. Coming off of a co-winning of the Jennings last year, he has an 895 save percentage and 3.05 goals against average through 20 appearances. Truly, our starter has been King Casey, 22, 17, and 5, one shutout, 919 save percentage, and 2.6 goals against average from the 36-year-old, 81 overall, backup role goaltender. He's been incredible through the five seasons that we've been here in Vancouver, but he is currently out due to a herniated disc, and he's going to be out for about three more weeks. So Hunter Jones, you have the crease, buddy, and it's going to be a dicey situation for us as we cannot find that even strength scoring. Now, all that being said, we're a high overall team, we're a high poise team, you never know what might happen with when it comes to EA Voodoo in the playoff simulation. But before we get there, we got to think about what will our lineup be so that we can give ourselves the best chance to actually have a run. I know there's a lot of negativity surrounding the team right now, but when we went to the Stanley Cup final two years ago, we had a record that was even worse than this one, going 41, 34, and 7. This year, we're 42, 33, and so one more win and one less regulation loss. But just to say, that season when we had only 41 wins, we went all the way to the Stanley Cup final. Now, a couple of big things in the comments from the last episode that I asked the assistant general managers was, number one, what are our line combinations going to be? And number two, do we think about making a head coaching swap for our associate coach to come in as head coach. I'll get to the coaching in a moment, but first things first, before I get into the comments themselves, every comment that gave a proposed lineup, I went ahead and put that into an Excel sheet. I gave a player four points if that comment said for them to be on the first line, three on the second, two on the third, and one on the fourth, zero if they were a healthy scratch. And this is a lineup that we get when we take an average of all the lineups that were suggested by the AGMs. And here they are. So the averages of all the AGM comments would come out to a first line of Reinhardt, Pedersen, and Stone on the first line, Kuzmenko, Miller, and Ratu on the second, but Colson, Kopitar, and Hyman on the third, then Anderson, Dolan, Richie, and Lakaramaki on the fourth. Now for Lakaramaki, he ended the season injured. He's back to full health now, but I think that made a few people forget about him, as in three of the proposed lineups, he wasn't even a part of them. Not even 13th forward, he wasn't in the lineup at all from three different comments. But when he was taken into consideration in the lineup, many people had him on the on the third line, a bit on the second, even one on the first line. So I would think that Lakaramaki actually gets third line minutes as opposed to fourth line minutes. But but Colson has been very good. He's been a trooper in the postseason. Through our four postseasons so far, he's played in 50 games and has scored 11 goals and 10 assists for 21 points. He's a plus two. It's a 34 point 82 game pace. And you know, he's usually like a 20 high 20 point guy. So he's scoring at a slightly higher pace in the postseason than he does in the regular season. So shout out to Pickleson for that. I don't know if I can put him on the third line and put Lekaramaki on the fourth as a result, because we do need the scoring from Lekaramaki. So that's the slight adjustment I would make before I even make any other adjustments, just the averages. I think if most people remembered Lekaramaki, he would have averaged out to be a third line guy. And then Pickleson, who had the lowest third line score would probably be on the fourth line but this is the lineup before I even go into the comments that will kind of just have as our template now that being said we go over to the other thing asked for suggestions for in the last episode and that is the coaching now when we come to our head coach Damian Ramirez has it's been his first season as head coach he's been in our system for a couple of years now he you know didn't look great in that second half absolutely not but in the end we're in the postseason he was here for an incredible first half of the year should we replace him with our associate coach who is our former head coach, Galena. Galena, we fired him, or not fired him, but we removed him from the head coaching role after we lost in seven in round number one last year. But up until then, he had a 61.1 winning percentage. He had just won the President's Trophy with us as well. It might not be a crazy idea to try him back as head coach and then see if that even works longer term because he has six more years on his contract after this one. Meanwhile, Ramirez would be gone after this season if he doesn't come back as head coach because you wouldn't want to resign to be associate or assistant or anything else. So Ramirez didn't give us the best results in the end. We couldn't get any scoring going. I think part of that does lie on the shoulders of the coach. But would Galena be any better? Should we roll with the head coach who got us here or make a swap? Now, if we do make a swap, it would pretty much just be a paper transaction. We're not firing Ramirez or anything like that. It would just be more of a thing in the eyes of the game. We can still call Ramirez our head coach or they can call themselves co-head coaches, whatever you want to do a little Michael Scott, Jim Halpert. But in the end, it's just the game only takes one head coach. And the simulation may be more favorable to us if we put Galena in there. I mean, Galena got us to a Stanley Cup final, but he also got us eliminated in seven games last year. So it's a delicate balance to think about. 
That's why it's great to have the AGMs here, and we'll dive into the comments from the last one. There were a lot of great comments in the last one, including many that included thoughts on the offseason, saying that we'll need to be doing a retooling or a rebuilding, and I agree that after this season, we will be seeing some of that, regardless of how the postseason goes. Whether we win the Stanley Cup or lose in four in round number one, this team will need to see some changes, as Kofi Tar probably retires, Hyman and Stone are both expiring, Kuzmenko and Miller are both definitely trade candidates, so the degree of our retool will be determined by how this postseason goes, but we will be seeing a retool, and that's what many comments make mentioned, including this one as we start off with Golden Gamer, descending into madness a little bit with me from the last one. You want to know how I got these scars? From this absolute joke of a second half. Oh my goodness, Data, you are a trooper for sitting through that madness. Thank you. <laughs> this entire team is going to have to be revamped. This has to be the end for both Miller and Kuzmenko on this team, plus Kopitar because of a most likely retirement, and we can't afford to keep Stone. Hyman, I would try to resign, but he might not even be able to stick around. I know you said Reinhardt most likely would be gone. That was probably me just venting a little bit, but I'm not ready to give up on him just yet, and I agree. I would prefer to keep him as we can't send everybody out, but we'll see. Now, a lineup would look something like Ratu, Pedersen, Reinhardt, Kuzmenko, Kopitar, Hyman, Lekaramaki, Miller, Stone on the third, then Coleman, Richie, put Colson on the fourth. Keep the defense the same. Yeah, we've all agreed on that pretty much across all the comments, aside from maybe we move Qu uh, Quinn Hughes around a little bit. Uh, bring Galena back as head coach. Something has to change that coaching staff. I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't know if I want the misery to end in round one against Bertuzzi and the Oilers, or if I want us to go on a run to most likely be disappointed again. I just don't know. My office in the GM and AGM's building has about three holes in it. Thankfully, I only have a bruised hand from punching through them. I think I could hear Pat screaming from down the hall as well. Can we turn this around? I don't know, but we've got to do something for this team. Let's rally the troops and wake them up. Assistant GM Golden out. Let's go Nuts. Thank you, Golden. Great comment. Love the visualization of you in your office. Appreciate that. Next up, we'll go to Joaquim, who said, tough to watch, Data. I think you made the correct moves with Jones, Hyman, and Stone. Although we were second in the NHL in the first half, it wasn't that convincing. I believe you should bring back Galena. Horrible from Ramirez, really. I would also like to bring back the Kuzmenko, Pedersen, Miller, first line that has a plus five, as we'll need that against uh, Connor McDavid and the Oilers. Depending on the chemistry, I would like to see uh, a bottom nine of Ratu, Reinhardt, Stone, Hyman, Kopitar, Petkolzin, and Coleman, Richie, Anderson, Dolan. We have a team with high poise, good point, so it could be a fun postseason. Thank you, Joaquim. Raises a good point. Even though, you know, we can't guarantee that poise is the be-all, end-all of postseason simulation, we do see Stone with 96 poise, Pedersen 91 poise, uh, Kopitar somewhere in here with 91 poise as well. So to me, this is a team that screams strap on the rocket for EA Voodoo because we should not be in the position where we were in the standings. And add to the fact that the game kind of treats the regular season and the postseason as two different entities. And you know what? I'm not ready to call the season over just yet. But there's still a lot of work to be done and we can't bet on getting a favorable Voodoo bounce. Michael left a comment saying, Hey Data, regarding the coach, I don't think there should be a coaching change going into the postseason, but Ramirez has to go in the offseason and maybe Galena as well. Ramirez has poor line chemistry fits for many of our forwards, particularly on the second line, and if I'm remembering correctly, Galena was no better. Also, our staff chemistry is low. We need to get more line chemistry pluses for our forward lines, and in the offseason, we should look for a head coach with better line chemistry fits, even if it means getting someone with a slightly lower overall. In the meantime, good luck with this postseason. With EA Voodoo at play, anything can happen. Thank you for adding your thoughts in there, Michael. Next comment, a bit more of the offseason thoughts, but just to put it out there, Mila's saying, I'm going to throw out a huge hot take. Pedersen hasn't been producing well enough for his overall and spot in the lineup. I don't know if it's his line mates or just simulation, but I'd maybe look deeper at him to see his worth of the team, or maybe it's better to move on from him. And then edit, especially if he doesn't produce in the playoffs? It's a fair point, Myla, and I don't think it's as huge of a hot take as you might think. I hear you, and thank you for leaving it. Running through just a few more comments quickly now, as there were a lot of good ones in the last one, I just want to highlight a few more points. Silly Nice saying, fire the coach and promote the associate coach to head coach for sure. I would also put Reinhardt back in the top six. That's true because he was third line center. Jacob leaving a comment, which mentioned we should swap the roles of Galena and Ramirez on our coaching staff as well. Cheating Heel leaving a comment that says the second half feels like a team that just stopped playing for their coach. Not sure if we fire him now, but at the very least, we should play musical chairs and make a final decision in the off season. And finally, to finish it off on a high note from the 
Mighty novel left by Mighty Joe Maple, which I replied to in the comments. At the end of this Mighty novel, Joe says, I still have faith. We're going to beat Edmonton because they're too busy slipping on their oil. Then we'll probably play Anaheim and get to enjoy the California sun. DeSmith will be back by then, and then we can have a wild ride against the Wild and a Stanley Cup final against Vanacek and the Devils. Let's put on our big boy pants, hit the gym, hit the ice, hit the dinner table, hit the bed, and repeat for the next 28 games. Thank you, Data, for all the madness you endured during this episode. Looking forward to Starfleet Thursday night. Much love to you and the community. Mighty Joe Maple signing off. Thank you, Mighty Joe. And the many other assistants and general managers who left some great thoughts in the last one. I think there was like well over 30 comments between on just on YouTube. Then there's Discord server thoughts as well. For one half season episode, that's a lot. And the majority had a few paragraphs in there. So thank you everyone for your involvement in the series. And hopefully it pays off big time as we head into this postseason. So when it comes to our lineup, before we even do anything, although it wasn't a unanimous decision, I think we will be making a coaching change. Not that we'll fire our coach and bring in someone who's totally unproven, but I think we pl will play a little bit of musical chairs. So while it may not give us a big advantage or even any advantage at all, I do think that we should do something based on how badly the team fell apart in the second half. It was his first season being a head coach. He had a great first half and the team just quit on him in the second half. I don't think we can just let that go without doing something about it. So we're not going to fire him. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a demotion. It could just be a paper transaction here in franchise mode. Really, we'd be just talking to Kalina behind closed doors saying, hey, buddy, you got to pick it up a little bit for Ramirez. And then we talk to Ramirez. We say, listen, Galina's going to help you a little bit more. He has a bit more experience in the playoffs. He's been here before. It's just a little postseason tweak. You had the reins in the season. Now Galina's going to help you out a little bit in the postseason. Nothing more than that. So Ramirez, I'm going to demote you for a quick second here. Galina's going to go back to head coach for the time being, and Ramirez will come back to NHL associate coach. And staff chemistry goes up to 66%, so that's a good thing right there. His own personal chemistry went down, but the the chemistry, the morale, I should say, sorry, of the head coach, Galina, is happy, and the staff chemistry is at 66 So Galina as head coach, let's see what that does to the lines. We had plus four, negative one. Uh, in the top six, it now goes plus five, negative two, then plus one, plus one. So it's definitely not ideal on the second line. JT Miller with a horrible fit on the second line, but a decent fit, a decent enough fit everywhere else. I would say maybe Miller comes down to the third line. Maybe a swap with, I don't know, if he swaps with Hyman, it's a negative three. No one that, that was the why we got Galena out in the first place. The curse of the second line. Just horrible chemistry fits for everybody. So no matter what, I don't think Galena can stay here long term as head coach. But for the postseason, I think it's worth the plus five, the plus ones in the lineup. The defense, it's pretty much just a wash. But I'm going to see if we can mix things around a little bit. I want to follow what the AGM said. I don't want to change too much of what the average suggestion consensus was. I think the first line has to stay as the first line. And Kuzmenko, when we demoted him in the postseason last year, he had three assists, no goals. He did horribly as a third liner, so maybe we got to keep him on the second line. At least he has a couple check marks as well. Both Ratu and Miller have the same just horrible fit on the second line. One, moving Ratu down could give it a zero. Moving Miller down would probably just keep it as a negative one, though. Yeah, Ratu would probably have to go down, but Ratu, we love him. We can trust him more. So I would think Ratu has to stay on the second line. It's probably Anze Kopitar. You know what? He had, what, two assists in one game, yeah, last postseason before he got injured. So I'm thinking maybe we do something like that then. Kuzmenko, Kopitar, Ratu, then we'll go Hyman, Miller, and Lekaramaki on the third line. There's still a lot more mixing and matching that we can do, but we've got a plus five on the first line, and just the new head coach vibe, or whatever you want to call it overall. So we're going to start game one looking like that. For the defense, there were suggestions saying move down Quinn Hughes, while Caleb left a suggestion saying that Carson Soucy should be in with Quinn Hughes, because I think that would be like a good uh, OFD and DFD placement, offensive and defensive defenseman. Gives them a plus three. So that would be something as well, but I've been very impressed with the bottom guys. I don't know if I want to move out McIsaac or Ristolainen to make that happen. So Quinn Hughes, I'm going to try and treat him like it's the first game of a new season. I don't want to carry over too, many, too much baggage from the regular season. I want to give them a chance to prove themselves in the postseason, but the leash on Quinn Hughes
reviews. It's extremely short, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing second pair or third pair within a few games if he doesn't start picking it up. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll keep Hironik with him there. Willander has been so-so. Last year, he was great. Five assists in seven games. So hopefully he can continue. And Hunter Jones is the starter. There you go. No need to change anything for the special teams. And this will be our lineup for game number one, ladies and gentlemen, against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. A bit of a lengthy introduction, so apologies for that. As always, you see the length of this video is, I think I'm just going to guarantee right now, it's going to be over an hour and 40 minutes. I'm guaranteeing it right now. So don't be fooled. We could lose in round number one, and it's just an hour of, of a blank screen with some beautiful Beethoven playing in the background. If it is, let it run a little bit. It would be very much appreciated for the performance of the video, but I hate having 30 minute videos that you are already spoiled. So this one will be an hour 40 plus because we had a lot to think about at the beginning after we descended into madness at the end of last season. And now here we are ready to get started. So the Edmonton Oilers, we faced them two years ago in round number two on our road to the Stanley Cup final. We swept them in four games. So they're coming back with a vengeance. Nugent Hopkins, McDavid and Fajmo is their first line. Everly, Holloway and Fabry on the second. Bertuzzi, Bourgo and McLeod on the third. Grunstrom, Kerfoot and JVR on the fourth. Of course, we have history with Tyler Bertuzzi. We traded him away in the Mark Stone deal. He scored nine points in 11 games with Vegas before they flipped him to the Oilers, and he scored 11 points in 19 games in Edmonton after he had scored 24 and 50 with us. So there you go. Bertuzzi, he's playing third line minutes on the Oilers, and he's loving life over there. He wants to be, I don't know how he's feeling after being traded away by us, but he's on a better team now on paper, so hopefully no hard feelings. Uh, on the first line, of course, Connor McDavid, 98 overall. He had a 93 point season. Another guy who should be simulating so much better. Pedersen, McDavid. I don't know how they're not scoring 100 plus points every season. It's ridiculous. But there you have it. McDavid at a 98 overall. On defense, Nurse and Bouchard, White Cloud and Chikrin, Gavrikov and Broberg. And between the pipes, they have Jack Campbell backed up by Matt Murray. Jack Campbell was their backup this season, but Logan Thompson currently injured. He was their starter all year. 45 wins from Logan Thompson. So having him out is a big blow for the Oilers. And I believe he just got injured towards the end of the regular season his current injury report says pending evaluation and I believe it's a concussion but we don't know how long he'll be out could it be short term could it be long term having a 45 win goalie out goes a long way same for Adam Yerchek 83 overall defenseman and Jack Campbell is their starter 81 overall he was a backup this season going 5 9 and 2 891 save percentage 3.35 goals against average so if we can use a little EA poise voodoo the poise boys if they can come through a little bit add in hopefully being able to break through Jack Campbell and place a heavy emphasis on shutting down their first line I think when we match second line to second line third line to third line I think we have the advantage so even though they're a 50 win team I think this is a doable series definitely not that we're gonna win it but I think if there's ever a wild card series to say I think there's some hope I think this is it ladies and gentlemen we're on the road at Rogers place to kick it off and without further ado we're ready to hit it heading into the postseason five four and one in our last 10 the Oilers are 8, 2, and 0. Oh. As we've been saying time and time again, it doesn't matter how you get to that dance, it's what you do on the dance floor. Game 1, round 1, year 5, a year in which much will change in the upcoming offseason. Let's make it count. First period in Edmonton, we're up 1-0. Quinn Hughes, the captain, picking up after the disgusting season that he had. He heard the calls on the radio, he read the tweets, he saw the comments, and he opens up the score. The captain comes through in a big way, and we're leading the shots 14-10 to 10 after 20 with a 1-0 lead. Second period now, and it's 3-2. But Colson makes it 2-0. There's that postseason clutch. But McDavid, Holloway, and then Nurse. Ooh, the hat trick of the special teams. Even strength, power play, and shorthanded. Wow. Three goals from the Oilers there to now put us down by one after being up by two. Shots are tied at 22 through 40, and we're down by one headed into the third period. Hughes and Pudkolzin with the only goals. Power play Oilers killed off five minutes in. We need the top six to come through. This has been our biggest issue. The top six even strength scoring. Come on now. No scoring through the first 15 minutes here. Final five minutes. Do we have a final push from somebody on the road in Edmonton for game one in the final minute and the Oilers will hang on for the 3-2 victory the shorthanded goal ends up being the game winner and that's a horrible horrible uh, effort to score two goals 
be up 2-0 and then lose 3-2 on a power play goal to tie it and then a shorthanded goal to put them ahead. Out shooting the Oilers 32-29 and we lose game one by a score of 3-2 because of three second period goals. Of course, Jack Campbell makes 30 saves. He's going to turn into prime Dominic Hasek without a doubt. And we drop game one in a tough one as we definitely could have had that if we just had a little bit of the top six scoring. What are the plus minus? Well, actually, well, power play shorthanded. We won't see much for the plus minuses in this one. Uh, negative one, actually two, uh, well, four penalty minutes, a double minor or two minor penalties for Mark Stone, negative one. Pedersen, negative two. Reinhardt, negative two. Great, there's that top line. So you know what? There's no one who has a long leash. There is no one who has a long leash out here. So we're going to go ahead and put Stone back on the right wing. On the left wing, a lot of people were calling for Kuzmenko. I think Ratu goes back up, though. I'm going to give Ratu some time there with Pedersen and Stone. Kuzmenko, Kopitar, Reinhardt. We'll keep the third line as it was. Uh, but JT Miller, I'm tempted to get him back in the top six soon enough. We'll keep an eye on that. And that'll be it. Little tweak heading into game number two. And now we'll cross our fingers and try to get back on the horse a little bit so we can bring back a best of five, a 1-1 series to Vancouver in game number three. Game two, round one here at Rogers Place. Little tweak has been made. No goals from the top six or top nine even in that one. Let's do it. First period, 0-0 after 20. Shots 13-11 to 11 in our favor, but no scoring in the first 20 minutes. Second period now, 0-0 it remains. Shots are 26-24 to 24 in our favor. 24 saves by Hunter Jones, 26 saves by Jack Campbell, and we're headed into the final 20 minutes to decide this one. Next goal might be the winner. No scoring through 40 minutes, and it's Mark Stone opening up on the first line. His first postseason goal as a Canuck. He is a Stanley Cup captain. He's been here before. Four, and we're up 1-0 through the halfway point of the third period. Shots are 34-28. Power play Vancouver would go a long way and put Coles and scores as it expires. Two goals and two games from Vasily Podkolzin, and our dear beloved son Rasmus Ristolainen adds a third for good measure. It is a 30-save shutout for Hunter Jones, the first of his career, and we end 3-0 in our favor. Shots 39-30. to Big, big, big win on the road here. Hunter Jones makes 30 saves. A goal from Mark Stone and two assists from Aturatu up on that top line. Very well done. Very, very, very well done. 3 0 shutout. Not only scoring enough goals, but locking it down defensively. And that brings a 1 1 series back to Vancouver. Put Coles in. What a unit out there. What a monster. I don't think I want to move him off, though. He seems to be liking that fourth line. And for the goaltending, Hunter Jones, I believe that was these were his first two postseason games of his career. Yes, they were. So the first postseason win and the first postseason shutout of his NHL career. There you go for Hunter Jones. Thank you very much. And we have a 1 1 series. It will be a best of five as we will bring this series back to Vancouver now at Rogers Arena. Let's do it in front of the Canucks faithful. The last time they saw us, we lost in game seven and got eliminated in round one last year. Let's bring back some good vibes from Edmonton and try to keep the good um, the good momentum in our favor. First period, it's one nothing Canucks at Turatu. There is that first line. That's what we want to see from that combination. I am loving that line. The shots are 10 to 8 through 20 and we are up 1-0. Nothing. Second period now, 2-1 goal apiece. Jordan Everly, he's back in Edmonton. He ties the game up at 1. But then Anze Kopitar, 40 years old. He's been a Stanley Cup captain before. Actually, he's been a Stanley Cup alternate captain. And he's been a... I don't think he's been a Stanley Cup captain, but he's been a captain. And we're up 2-1 after 40. Shots are 25-19. And we have the one goal lead thanks to our veteran, the oldest player in our lineup, Anze Kopitar. Up by 1, but Evan Bouchard to tie it up early in the third period. Shots are very even as well. We now have a 2 2 game halfway through this third period shots 31 28 Evan Bouchard with the only goal of the period power play Vancouver now late in the third a big big kill by the Oilers final minute now will we see overtime yes we will shots end tied at 33 score ends tied at two and we're headed to OT Overtime here in Vancouver at Rogers Arena. 2-2 game. Next goal will put their team... Next, hold on, here comes Hironix speeding down the middle! Oh my goodness, off the opening face-off. Sorry, next player to score will put his team up 2-1 in this series. Hey, here comes a penalty now. We had a lot of time in the zone, but Ratu takes a penalty. Two for tripping. It's been horrible AI play as always, but unfortunately we got to go in when it comes to the uh, to the overtimes. That two two for tripping, and we're off to the penalty kill now. He is furious. Defensive zone draw. Oilers 0 for 1 on the power play tonight with one shot from the point. Big blocker saved there by Hunter Jones. Hunter Jones third in team scoring with two assists. <laughs> 
Nuge has a lot of space. Coming in now. Gets it over to McDavid. McDavid. Ooh! Poked by McIsaac. How about that? And here's Phasma with the point. On net. Nice blocker saved by Jones. Redirected into the corner. Everly. Long pass down to Nuge. Nuge Hopkins up against Risto. Poked away by Risto Lion. You will not get by the wall. <laughs> now here comes Stone the other way. Neutral zone. McDavid picks it off. 10 seconds left in the Edmonton power play. McDavid streaking into Nuge in tight. Can't just tuck it away there. Kopitar, as the defense changes in front, Kuzmenko's shot is blocked. Eberle, he gets tripped now. Here comes another power play for the Oilers on another tripping penalty. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. Sam Reinhardt, two for tripping. Here we go. A little trip behind the net. Of course, a little, the classic poke check to put goals in. He scored a couple goals through two games so far. But Coles rings it off the post, looking for his third. Now here's Miller in front, but calls it again. <laughs> The one knee, one T, broken up by uh, by Bouchard. To Borgo. can somebody hang on for a face off? Oh, sprawling pad saved by Jones. We can't get a, a change out there. Hannafin, dump it, buddy. Come on. I hate that. Just no one can like have a little burst of effort. Just now, it's as if my legs are in quicksand. Holloway, kick save, batted out of the air. Can't get anything going there. Fabry, Bouchard, wide. Uh, total onslaught here by the Oilers. Fabry stopped by Jones again. Get it out. Come on. Fabry skating in against McIsaac. Gets the shot off. Hunter Jones will hang on as we finally get a face off, having killed off two minor penalties. Four minutes of penalty killing. And with 14 20 to go in overtime, we are still alive. Bouchard to Eberly down low. Can't get a good shot off. And it's going to be a crazy EA goal to end it. Hunter Jones makes miracles. And the goal to go in is an EA glitch. Of course, of course! <sighs> Makes the save, just watches it, and then do we put it in our own net? I don't even know. Jordan Amber, let me see this on net. Then for some reason he falls down, and then who was it? Was that Risto put it in our own net? Shot is taken. He's just looking at it. For some reason, already in butterfly, he falls. And then it's Risto who puts it in our own nets. How does that even happen? Risto actively puts it, on, not a tip-in, actively shoots it into our own net. Now I'm seeing how bad this is. Come on! This is the game that we have in HL 24? Just putting it in your own net? Shots end 46 to 36. Hunter Jones makes miracles. And Ristolainen just shoots it into his own net. And we're now down 2-1 in the series. So help me. If it's a tight series that we lose... Oh my goodness, 3-2 loss. I don't even want to think about that game. I just want to move straight on to game four. We're down 2-1 in the series. We've got to tie it up at two and head back to Edmonton with this series being a best of three. Let's forget about it. we got to find a way to break through Jack Campbell. Hunter Jones is giving us the opportunity to win these games. Let's reward him. Let's make it all. Let's, you know, it's for a reason. Come on now. It's not for nothing. First period, 1-0. Pedersen on the power play. No! Thompson is back! Thompson back from injury. We got three games of Jack Campbell and we went, what, one, one, and one? One win, two losses. Oh, Logan Thompson's back. We break through him though in the first period with a power play goal, one nothing after 20. Second period, two nothing. Okay, Pedersen again. Even strength and power play goals from Elias Pedersen. Shots are 27 19. We're up two nothing. Okay. Okay, five minutes into the third period, Elias Pettersson only one to score for us tonight. I'd love to see more in that top six. The first line's been doing all right. Power play Vancouver killed off by the Oilers. Into the final five minutes now. Don't you dare tell me. Don't you dare tell me. Hunter Jones, shut out. Let's go. Shots end 35 to 29, and we win 2-0 to tie the series back up at 2. Hunter Jones makes 29 saves for his second win and second shutout. That must be making history somewhere. First two wins, both by shutouts. Two goals from Pedersen. Thompson does make 33 saves on 35 shots, though. He looked good. Only Pedersen could break through him. So you know what? Who knows? Maybe that that lost last game in overtime. Maybe we would have lost anyways. But at least we win the next one. We tie the series up at two. And it will now be a best of three headed back to Edmonton. All right. So Logan Thompson back to full health. Unless it's a playable injury. Let's check that out quickly. But Logan Thompson back between the pipes for the Oilers. And he starts it off with a big 33 save ninth, but we break through him. Hunter Jones was just that much better. He is back to full health and backed up by Campbell, who had a 934 save percentage. So you know what? Thompson at uh, 942. Yeah, well, it's pretty much the same thing. 
We got it. We can't be counting on miracles from Hunter Jones every night, though. We need to see some more scoring. These lines have been good enough. But to keep me from making more changes, we got to see more. So game five back in Edmonton at Rogers Place between Rogers Arena and Rogers Place. Thompson between the pipes back at home for the Oilers faithful. And we're coming off of a big 2-0 victory. They are going to want to answer that shutout. Let's try and keep the pedal to the metal. First period, 0-0 after 20. Doubling the shots, 14-7. Second period, now 2-2. Two, two. Goal two goals apiece, excuse me. Fajimo scores even strength. Oh, interesting. Two goals from, from Fajimo and two goals from Ratu. Both scoring one even strength and one power play. That's crazy. Fajimo even strength, Ratu power play. Fajimo power play, Ratu to even strength so all right 2-2 two, two after 40 shots are 28 to 18 last game we saw two from Pedersen tonight we see two from Ratu but the difference in tonight's game is that we got to see more from somebody else power play Oilers to start the period we kill that off and Sam Reinhardt answers the call putting us up by one now with about now 12 minutes to go as Sam Reinhardt gives us the lead power play Vancouver great timing in Pedersen three goals in two games as he extends the lead to two 4-2 Canucks after, into the final two minutes now. Final push from the Oilers at home, and we hang on for the victory. Shots end 39-32, to and we win that one 4-2. Big comeback. Ratu with two goals. Pedersen a goal and two assists. Three goals and five points in two games, and Fajmo scoring two goals up in that top line for the Oilers. But we win 4-2, and now give ourselves a 3-2 series lead. Okay, injured hand for Tom Willander. That's going to keep him out for about a week but definitely not available for next game. That's unfortunate. What was he up to? Uh, where is he? Tom Willander. Five games, no points, plus one. Not the end of the world to take him out. I totally forgot to mention Zach Hyman against his old team, by the way. Zach Hyman against the Oilers, a team where he had crazy seasons, right? Or am I thinking maybe in the Starfleet series? But he did pretty well. Yeah, he had some solid years here in, in, uh, in Edmonton. He had some decent enough seasons. Uh, what has he done? Two assists and a plus one. Love it. So defense now, we'll see... Will we see Risto or McIsaac move up? Risto, yeah, one goal. The one on his own. One goal on the other team's net, one goal on our net. Uh, anything for chemistry? Does it change anything? Plus two for Risto. That, eh, plus two for Risto. As much as we hate what happened in overtime, EA Voodoo took over his brain, so we can't blame him too much, I guess. But Susie would be a negative one. We could put him on the top pair with Hughes. No, we'll go Susie third pair. Yeah, we'll do Susie third pair. Hannafin Risto on the second pair. And Hunter Jones will continue with his 951 save percentage. Let's go. Let's go. On the power play, four-man power play. Yeah, we'll take off Susie. We'll just throw the Karamaki on there. No problem. All right, so we're headed back home to Vancouver with a chance to end the series here in front of the Vancouver faithful in game six. What's up down in the AHL over here? AHL, we are... In a, okay, we lose game one and win game two. We ended 40, 26, and 6. All right, good to keep note of. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. No reason to stop right here. We are up three games to two. Maybe we should have already won the series by now if it wasn't for that overtime gaff. But here we are at home looking to end off the series in six games. Don't let it go to seven and have to face Edmonton again. Let's end it right here, right now, and show the, the hockey world that that second half was not going to define us first period and it's one nothing oilers as bouchard scores the opening goal shots 10 to 9 in our favor second period now ooh boy three nothing oilers kerfoot on the power play and then mcdavid even strength shots are 20 to 18 in our favor but we're down three nothing as logan thompson is waking up now and we have not been able to get anything past him three on 18 past hunter jones isn't great either but we have to deliver for hunter we got to do it for him come on now Third period, and we're not done yet. Power play, but that's... Yeah, we can't be taking penalties. Thankfully, Zach Hyman scores his first of the postseason, but then Bouchard comes right back. So this game is not going to be it. We're down by four with 12 minutes to go. This is not going to be it. So Hunter Jones, he was bound to have a little bit of a hiccup. He's been doing so, so well. And we're going we're gonna to see seven. We're going to see seven. I think we're going to change something, though. Again, zero goals from the top six. We got to change something here. Bouchard scores twice. Thompson makes 25 saves. We're going to change something in that top six. And we're headed to game seven. We are headed to game seven after a, the biggest margin of victory in the series so far. Kuzmenko, you're you're finished, buddy. You're done. First line, what have they been doing? Ratu, five points. Pedersen, six. Stone with five. Kuzmenko, three assists, negative three. Kopitar, two points, negative one. Reinhardt, one goal, negative five. Oh my goodness. Hyman, three points. Miller with one assist. Lakaramaki, one assist. 
Sheesh. Yeah, we gotta do something here. And on defense, what's up? Hughes, four points plus one. Uh, negative one, plus two, plus three, and zero. All right, it's the forwards. It's the top six. We're gonna do something here. I'm thinking maybe something like this. Yeah, I'm thinking we go a little crazy. I'm thinking we go a little crazy. First line stays the same. Miller, Kopitar, Karamaki on the second. Let's go put Colson, Reinhardt, and Hyman on the third. Reinhardt can get a little bit of defensive help here. Negative five, you're killing me, buddy. And Kuzmenko, you're finished. You're just finished. You're washed. It's over. It's over. You have zero goals in the last 13 postseason games. You used to be a 30-goal guy. 45 goals. You used to be him, and now you're not. So, I don't know. You can stay on the power play. Does he have... Oh, hold on. Are these even strength assists? Or power play assists? One power play. So, last in the last 13 postseason games, of your six points, you have two even strength points in 13 postseason games. No. Sorry, buddy. Fourth line. But Colson is delivering more. I don't, it goes by it goes by performance. I don't care what your overall is. I don't care what your story is. It goes by performance. But Coles and Reinhardt Hyman get the plus one. We're kind of desperate a little bit as well. We need a victory here. And Hunter Jones, we're going to keep rolling with Jones as the starter. And that's it. That's going to be our lineup. That's all I got to say. I'm Trust is a big word, but I'm putting a lot in the hands of this squad. Miller back in the top six. Like Karamaki with a look in the top six as well. Let's see if that can work out with Kopitar. And we go from there. That's it. I'm thinking Hyman with Lakaramaki swap, but instead of 0 plus 1, it would be negative 1, 0. So let's try Hyman to help out the defensive side of things on the third line. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. It all comes down to this in a similar situation as last year. Game 1, round 7. Only this time we're on the road. Coming off of a nasty 5-1 loss at home. We've beaten the Oilers in Edmonton before. We can do it. May the 1st, 2028. Game 7 of round 1, here we go ladies and gentlemen. This game will have a huge implication on the future of this team and what moves we make in the offseason. The final opportunity for a lot of players to prove their worth. First period and it's 1-1 one, one after 20. Elias Pettersson, only guy who seems to want to score goals out here. That's his 4th goal and 7th point of the series as he opens it up but then Everly ties it about 5 minutes later. Shots are 14-8 to eight in our favor after 20 tied at 1. Second period, 4-1! That is what we're looking for from this team. Those are the performances, and that is the passion that we want to see. Who wants to be on this team? Who wants to be a Stanley Cup champion? And who wants to be on a contending squad? Atu Ratu. Another goal from Elias Pettersson. And for good measure, it's Jared McIsaac. 34 shots through 40 minutes. This is exactly the type of effort that I was looking for. And we dug deep for a little bit of passion somewhere still in the basement. We're up by three, out shooting the Oilers by 13. This game is not over yet. Power play, but calls him on the third line. That's why he got promoted, Kuzmenko. That's why he got promoted. And Patterson makes it six. Ladies and gentlemen, we are through to round number two as we defeat the Oilers in a seven game series. A little bit scary, that overtime loss and the extra point is good. Seven, one, 50 shots, what a show. Kuzmenko, <laughs> look at him. Make it nine! Wow! I can't remember the last time I saw over 50 shots in a slow sim. What a showing in game seven, ladies and gentlemen. Shots end 52 to 34. And the Canucks win nine to one. Game seven, how do you do? Six points from Pedersen, five from Ratu and Stone, plus fives, plus sixes. Miller, LeCaramaki, and Kopitar all, all with two points. It looks like the line changes did something. But Coles and McIsaac, Kuzmenko, Hronik, and Hughes with one point. Uh, actually, a fair amount of players with zero points in a nine-point game. Nothing from Reinhardt, this guy, and a zero plus minus, even a zero. <laughs> oh, wow. And the gold standing course, Hunter Jones, 33 saves on 34 shots. Three stars in this one. Pedersen, Ratu, and Stone, the first line. Wow. All I have to say is Wow. We are through, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time in a couple years since our run to the Stanley Cup, we have made it out of round number one. And we're kind of breaking the curse of the Canucks, where it's you do super well, then you just fall off a cliff. We could still lose in round number two, but at least it's not another round one exit for this franchise's history. Wow. Unfortunately, not a lot of time to rest as we're right back into it against the Anaheim Ducks now. And it's not going to be easy against Anaheim. They went 45-30-7 on the year. And we were the wildcard team that beat them 
two years ago in round number one on our road to the Stanley Cup. So they were an even better team two years ago, and we were an even worse team two years ago, and we beat them in six games in round number one as we had our journey to the Cup final. So they're not going to be happy about that. But before we go and check out their numbers, let's look at our team through round number one. Pedersen has 12 points through seven games, six goals, six assists, finally performing. He heard the trade rumors, and he answered in a big way. Ratu with 10, Stone with 10 points. There's that acquisition paying off. Hughes with five, Kopitar and Kuzmenko with four. He got his first goal in the last like 14 postseason games. Still no even strength points, only two even strength points in the last 14 games, but whatever. But Cole's in with three goals, what a tank. Hyman three, Lacare Mackey three at the plus four. Miller three, Hronik three, Reinhardt one goal, negative five. Risto one goal plus four, really one goal for us, one goal against us. McIsaac one goal plus six. Anderson Dolan one assist, Richie one assist, Susie plus two in two games, Willander plus one in five games, and Hannafin plus one in seven games. Hunter Jones, despite that one game of allowing five goals, he is four, two, and one with two shutouts, a 939 save percentage, and 1.98 goals against average through his first seven NHL postseason games. Wow. The Ducks, what did they do in round number one? My apologies. I believe they took down the, was it the Kraken in six games? Uh, yes, the Kraken in six games over in the other uh, series in the Western Conference. It's the Wild versus the Avalanche. So, you know what? Mighty Joe's prediction so far so good. Even over in the East, Rangers, Devils, and Canadians, Sabres. All right, all right, all right. Let's check out the Ducks lineup now. And we, of course, see a very good squad here in Anaheim. Leo Carlson, Trevor Zegers, and Troy Terry on the top line. McTavish, Tanner Howe, wow, an 88 overall. And Anthony Duclair on the second. Dickinson, Carlson, and Kuhlman. Who's this guy? Ludwig Carlson, maybe a distant cousin of Leo Carlson. Another Elk Carlson. And Lowry, Wenberg, and Lundstrom on the fourth line. Penguins legend for NHL 23. Defense, Minchikov with Drysdale. Kuhlman's with Zellweger. And Mackey with Casey. Ooh, very good defensive core. And it's uh, ooh, 80 overall Eric Comrie, of course, with a 919 save percentage. So it's a tandem of 80 overalls, Eric Comrie and Alex Nedeljkovic here in Anaheim. Interesting. Jacob Perrault, Fabian Lysel, and Connor McMichael as the three healthy scratches. Carlson, four points in six games. Zegras, five. Terry, only two. But it's, oh my, Anthony Duclair with 11 points in six games. Tanner Howe. Ninth overall pick in 2024, 99 shot pass, slap shot power, five star puck skills. Whoa, he has eight points in six games, and uh, Mace McTavish six goals and 11 points. So that second line is carrying. Dickinson, former Canucks player who we had back in 2021-22, so of course not during this franchise mode. Dickinson, Ludwig Carlson has five points. He is the seventh overall pick from 2025. Coleman with one assist. Fourth line, nothing too crazy. Wenberg gets three assists. Minchikov, no points. Drysdale, four points. All right. And there you have it. So there is the Ducks lineup. Pretty well-rounded, I would say. The score, the top line scoring is not there whatsoever. I didn't say to go to view contracts. But the second line scoring is carrying. So if we can just shut down that secondary scoring, and that already that primary scoring can't get going themselves, that'll look good for us. But we're going to keep the lineup as it's been with these lines. We just won 9-1 to one against the Oilers. We're not going to touch anything. And we'll make changes as they, if and when they become necessary. So headed into game one of round two here at the Honda Center here in Anaheim. Casey the Smith is fully healed. But Hunter Jones, I got to say, he has been too good to pull. Casey the Smith will be our backup. UPL off to the GM's booth here. He'll be watching from the press box, and Willander will be healthy soon enough as well. So Ukopak Lukanen is out, DeSmith is in, but Hunter Jones, with those numbers, he has to continue to start absolutely. Game one, round two here in Anaheim. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Facing the Ducks for the second time in three seasons, it's showtime. First period, we start off with a power play, ah, but the Ducks come out early. It's Adam Lowry down on that fourth line, opening it up, and then put Coles in. He loves it on that third line. He ties it. Then Kuhlman and Lowry again. Two goals from the fourth line, all three from the bottom six. Three goals on ten shots. We're rouching from 11, 11 to 10, but we're down by two. Not done yet, that's for sure. And there you go. Aturatu makes it three to two. And in the end, we have the lead. Kuzmenko, another power play goal. You know what? Keep scoring your power play goals, and that's fine, Andre. That is fine. Stone scores just his second goal of the postseason. We are now from down 3-1 to one to up 4-3. to three. Out shooting the Ducks 27-22. Great rally in that second period, but the Ducks are going to try to rally themselves here in the third. got to stand strong. 
power play Vancouver. And it's Mark Stone on the power play. His first multi-postseason, multi-goal postseason game as a Canuck, excuse me. From down 3-1, down by 2 to up by 2. Ducks power play late. We kill that off into the final 5 minutes. Make it 6-3. What a comeback. This is the type of effort we need to see from this team. A resilient squad for once. From down 3-1 to winning 6-4 as Dickinson adds a late one. Shots end 41-33 and we win 6-4. Uh, now scoring 15 goals in the past two games since I made those line changes. Stone two goals and an assist on, uh, for, to get first star honors. Lowry with a couple goals in the fourth line. And Aturatu with one goal and two assists on the third. Wow, look at that goal scoring. 15 goals in the past two games. Uh, AHL is done. Tom Willander back to full health. Do we want him back in? I don't know. Down in the AHL, we are through in a four-game series. Very nice. Now we'll face Vegas' AHL squad. Twamala had five points in four games. There you go. So over here on defense, Carson Soucy. How you doing, buddy? Three games, one assist, plus four. You know what? I can't take him out. Willander, he didn't do anything wrong, but five games plus one, two minor penalties. I'd rather keep rolling with Susie, especially saying that I don't want to change the mojo of anything. When we score 15 goals in two games, I don't want to touch a thing. We have to be a little bit better defensively here as we allow four goals. Scoring six is a great way to remedy that, but we can't always expect to score six. We gotta make sure that we are limiting the ducks here for game two of round two, up by one, up one nothing in the series. After being down three to one in last game, we had a big rally. Let's try to just get in front of it and not having to have a, a big rally this game. First period, and that is exactly what we're looking for. This is the team we've been waiting for. Mark Stone, Aturatu, and of course, who else? Vasily Pudkol's in. Shots tied at 11, and we're up 3 to nothing. Second period now, no scoring. Shots 24-23 for Anaheim, but we're up 3 nothing. still after two periods. The third thing, the Ducks had a very short power play to start the third period there that we ended up killing off. Very good. Halfway through the third period, still up 3 to nothing. After Hunter Jones allowed four power play Ducks. Extended power play for Anaheim here. Very extended opportunity for the Ducks. We kill all of that off. Hunter Jones, 31 save shutout after allowing four goals he collects his third shutout of the postseason in just six wins six wins three shutouts who is this man shots end 35 to 31 who's taking these penalties here at the end uh elbowing minor then susie high sticking double minor that's why sheesh huge penalty kill in the third period hunter jones first star with 31 saves stone and ratu with a goal and an assist apiece Huge 3-0 victory to put us up 2-0 in this series, winning both games on the road. We have now scored 18 goals in the past three games. Wow. All I can say is wow. These were the magical lines we were waiting to unlock. Put goals in five goals. Sheesh. And Hunter Jones, 938 save percentage. Oh my goodness. I don't want to stop for too long. I don't want the voodoo to catch up. I don't want to close anything. I don't even want to take a breath. I don't want a sip of water. I don't want anything. Here at Rogers Arena, back at home, up to nothing in this series, outscoring the Ducks, what, 9-4 to four through two games, and having scored 18 goals last three games. Let's keep this party going. No need to stop for a second. We love these lines. They're clicking. Let's let them continue to grow together. Here in Game 3, first period, it's 2 nothing Vancouver. <laughs> How does he do it? But Colson makes it to one nothing. He opens up the scoring with his sixth goal of the postseason. How does he do it? And Callum Ritchie scores his first career postseason goal. We're up two nothing after twenty. Second period now three nothing. It's Zach Hyman. Shots twenty six to eighteen after forty. Hunter Jones five periods of not allowing a goal. Power play Ducks killed off. Power play Canucks and it's power a power play from Sam Reinhardt. Where you been, buddy? Sam Reinhardt and LaCara Mackey makes it five. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, me. Oh, my. Shots 36-26, and we are going to go up 3-0 in this series. Don't tell me. Back-to-back <laughs> -back shutouts for Hunter Jones. Seven wins, four shutouts. This is ridiculous. This is otherworldly. 36 to 32, the shots end. And Hunter Jones, 31 saves last game, 32 saves this game. A goal and two assists from Stra Sam Reinhardt, and Vasily Pudkolzin continues the tear that he's been on. These were the magical lines we were waiting for. Add in the coaching change, add in the postseason voodoo. These were the lines we were waiting for. We're up 3 nothing in this series. Nothing, no, I don't want to look at the numbers. 
I don't want to look at the numbers. Let's end it at home with a nice juicy sweep. We don't want to stop for a second. First period. <laughs> right at the first period hat trick from Ratu. Each game presents a new story. Reinhardt picks up where he left off, finally an even strength goal, and then Ratu makes it 2 nothing. How says, okay, let me do something, make it 2 to 1, but then Ratu says, I don't think so, 30 seconds later, and then he ends off the hat trick. It took him 18 minutes and, what, 47 seconds to score a hat trick here in the first period. Is this not the stuff of legends? Shot 16 to 9 through 20. Make it 7 to 4! Trick from Reinhardt and Reinhardt. <laughs> I'm going crazy in another way now. It was my descent into madness, and now it's my elevation to jubilation. Drysdale, so hold on. So it was what? What was the score? Four to one? Yeah, four to one. 5-1, 6-1. The Ducks say, hold on now. They score three goals in about three and a half minutes to make it 6-4. to four. But then Reinhardt says, let me just cap off the hat trick. Why not? Even strength hat trick from him. And I'll, that was, was that first, the first goal of the postseason from JT Miller? Shots are tied at 26, but we're up by three, seven to four through 40 minutes, looking to end off the sweep. There's Anderson Dolan with his first goal, making it eight to four. These were the lines we were waiting for. Hocus Pocus, the magic has come through. Wow, this is it. The, the magic formula has finally been found. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formula, only nine to four. Four, and the Canucks are off to the Western Conference final, ladies and gentlemen. We get outshot 38 to 34. Hat trick from Reinhardt, hat trick from Ratu, two goals from Anderson Dolan, and we win 9 to 4. Or the plus minus is in this one. Negative 3. What? How are you in negative 3? Negative 3 from Miller and LeCaramacchi, and negative 2 from Kopitar. That third line has not been it, I guess. <sighs> And th three stars in this one, Ratu the hat-trick, Reinhardt the hat-trick, and Anderson Dolan, two goals and an assist. Ladies and gentlemen, your Vancouver Canucks are off to the Western Conference Final. Doing so, by the way, for the third time in the last four years here in our fifth season in Vancouver. So even if we lose in the Western Conference Final, three Western Conference Finals appearances, meaning that we were one of the top four teams in three of the last four years, I think that's something to be proud of in and of itself. Whew. Now, before we advance, let's just go straight to checking out the point totals. And hold on, let me just count the goals here again. Since we made those line changes for Game 7 against the Oilers, and the magic was just unlocked, we have scored 9-9-18, plus 6-24, plus another 5-29. We have scored 32 goals. 32 goals in the last five games. 32 goals for and 9 goals against. Outscoring our opponents 32 to 9 since those line changes. I'm shocked. I'm I'm impressed with myself, but it's also by pure luck that we got those lines, I think. Oh, you know, of course, there's a little bit of, of of logic that goes into it, but I gotta say, I was not expecting this. Ratu has 10 goals and 18 points through 11 games. Pedersen and Stone both have 17. Reinhardt woke up finally, 10 points from him. Hughes with 10, Miller with 8, despite being a negative 1. But Coles in 6 goals and 7 points. Hyman 7, Kuzmenko 7, there he is. Hronik with 6, Lakaramaki 5, Kopitar 5, Anderson Dolan with 4. 3 points coming in the last game. McIsaac, 3 points plus 12 from Jared McIsaac! <laughs> Richie with two points, Hannafin with two, Risto with that goal, Susie one assist and a plus eight, Willander has yet to come back, and of course, all rise and remove your hats for Hunter Jones, eight, two, and one with four shutouts, a 9.39 save percentage, and 1.98 goals against average through 11 appearances here in the postseason. Speechless. Absolutely speechless am I. Let's take a moment to rest a little bit. Let's, no, no, actually, you know what? Usually I say rest up, eat well. No, no. Let's keep pushing at practices. Your trios, whoever your line mate is, you are living with that individual. No families. Families are on pause. Ratu, Pedersen, Stone, I'm renting you out an Airbnb at one part of Vancouver. You're totally isolated. Just you three in a house. Continue to bond. Continue to build chemistry. Like Karamaki, Kopitar, Miller, you have your own Aaron B. There you go. Same for the third. Same for the fourth line. You all come together at practice. Then you all go home in the evening and you team build. Play some board games. Do whatever you got to do. Some icebreakers. 
and we're going to come back for round number three. We'll advance a few days and see how our opponent will be. The Avalanche and the Wild are tied at two in their series, so let's check it out. All right, so the waiting is over. In our last two Western Conference Finals, we faced Winnipeg both times, so a new opponent this year will it be Colorado or Minnesota. In the 2028 Western Conference Final, we'll face the Colorado Avalanche who finished the year 9-1 and oh, we beat them in the final game of the season, but they are a very good team. We are yet to face them as well through our franchise mode so far. So the Avalanche in round number one, they beat the Coy they swept the Coyotes in round number one and then took down the Wild in six in round number two. Over in the Eastern Conference, Canadians versus Devils. So the last four teams standing, two from Canada. How about that? Let's check out the Avalanche lineup now. They were a 44-win squad. And by the way, Anaheim, just to say, like, nothing from their top guys in that round against us. Horrible plus-minus. We really took down the Ducks hard. My goodness. Okay, so yes, the Avalanche, 44-win uh, win squad. Let's check them out. Kovalenko, McKinnon, and Ranton, and one of the best first lines in hockey, you would think. Second line, Nichuskin, Pinto, and Landeskog. Third line, Texier, Lawton, and O'Connor. Fourth line, Alexandrov, Bluger, and Dorofea. Bluger, who we had in our franchise mode. We traded him away early on. Yeah, off to the Hurricanes. Bluger! So here we go. Top line, Kovalenko. 14 points plus 14 through 10 games. 88-point season career high. Yeah. Nathan McKinnon, 16 points in 10 games, 99-point season. And Miko Rantanen, 15 points, 95-point season from him. That top line is going to be hard to beat. Nachuskin, 5 points. Pinto, only 2. Landeskog, 8. So that first line definitely carries. Third line, 5 points, 2 points, 5 points. Okay, so it's definitely a top-heavy team, at least production-wise. Defense, they got Byram and Makar on that first pair. Oh my goodness, Kale Makar with 11 points as well. Oh my goodness, plus 6. Devontae's and Mikhail Guliev on the second pair. Cal Foote, who won't be in the NHL by this time. And Sam Girard, 86 overall Sam Girard on the third pair. <sighs> and goaltending, it's uh, Tarasov at an 83 overall. 927 save percentage. 32, 20, and 6 was his record on the season this year. 912 save percentage. He's backed up by Kevin Lankinen. Scratches Edmondson, Wood, and Boakfast. Not Kyle Wood, Miles Wood. So, yeah, this is a very good Colorado team. And like I said, regardless of what happens, I'm proud of what this team has given us after such a, a horrible second half of the year. But I think we can do it. Having scored 32 goals in the last, whatever, five games. I think we can definitely have a chance. We definitely have a fighting chance in this series. The Avalanche are a top-heavy team production-wise. Very strong defense. Looks like they have a good goalie, but we know that we can get through them. Avalanche and Canucks in the West. Devils and Canadians in the East. Game one of round three. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. We've been on a crazy pace. Let's see how the team building did in that little week off. And it all comes down to this at Ball Arena for our third Western Conference Final in the last four years of the Data Era. The last time we were here, we won and went to the Stanley Cup Final. First period! 1-0 Avalanche and McKinnon opens it up. 16-12, to the shots through 20 minutes. Yikes. So we're definitely being bombarded there a little bit. We got 12 shots of our own, but allowing 16... Uh, thankfully, only one goal again. We're absolutely still in it. So here we go into the second period now. Two to one. That's exactly what I was talking about. Elias Pettersson scores twice. And now we are up two to one with the shots 26 to 19 in our favor. Big second period. Very resilient period. And you know what? Two goals within seven seconds. Pettersson with two huge goals. Wow. He got deep into the zone for that second one seven seconds later. Whew. All right. Third period. We are up by one. Not anymore. Dorfeyev scores just a few seconds in, but then Ratu gets his team leading 11th goal, then McKinnon ties it right back up, but then Miller answers back again, and we're up 4-3, and Ratu gets his second, make it 5-3, and then hold on, 5-4, what is that, six goals in the first five minutes, and then make it 6-4 for us, Ratu and Miller just going back and forth, and Jared McIsaac makes it seven, the goals keep coming, because Menko makes it 8-4, 40 goals in the last six games, 40 goals in six games, ladies and gentlemen. We win this one by a score of eight to four. Wow! Ratu scores twice, Miller scores twice, Kuzmenko has been scoring lights out on the power play. Shots end 42 to 28. 
Oh my goodness! Plus minuses in this one, only one, a negative one for Anderson Dolan playing six and a half minutes. Three stars, McKinnon gets the hat trick, but JT Miller and Elias Pettersson both scored two goals and an assist as we have a six goal third period to win eight to four. No, Kopitar injured elbow. Wait, hold on, isn't it the end of May already? Oh, it's May 17th. Oh, out till May 28th. No, these were the lines, these were the lines. No, these were the lines. Okay, Hyman's going to come up and Richie's going to come up. Hopefully it doesn't disrupt too much. Anderson Dolan can go center and Blake Coleman will come in on the fourth line. Hopefully it doesn't disrupt too much. I'm going to have to make uh, alterations here. No, I did not say in all lines. I'm going to scrap. I'll, I'll take care of it. I'm going to fix the lines to make sure that Coleman's not replacing Kopitar everywhere. Uh, thankfully, it's not for too, too long, but... We're going to have to go on without Kopitar again, unfortunately, just like last postseason. Thankfully, not for too long, but still. All right, so there we go. The lineup has been fixed. Kopitar wasn't playing, like, everywhere, everywhere. He was playing 13 minutes per night. Not like he's going to be a 20-minute per night guy that we have to fill. So Richie's going to slot up a little bit where he has to. And, you know, he'll be back soon enough. Today's the 19th. He's back the 27th. So he'd even be back for this series if it went long enough. So thankfully not for too, too long. Hopefully it doesn't affect the lineup too much, though, because we have been seeing how these lines have been clicking. 40 goals scored in the last six games. Let's keep the good times rolling here in Ball Arena. Eight goals scored on the road. The Avalanche are not going to like that. They're going to come back with a vengeance tonight. They scored four last game. we got to make sure that we're still scoring more. Let's do it. First period, and it's one nothing early. Philip Ronick scores his first of the postseason, and we're out shooting the Avalanche 12-9, up one nothing after 20. Second period, power play early in the second. Five on three opportunity, killed off by the Avalanche. Second period ends one to one as Dorfeyev scores his second in as many games. Shots are 21-20 in our favor, but we're all tied up headed to the third and final period. JT Miller, he's been heating up. That's his. Uh, that gives us a 2-1 lead, but then McKinnon ties it up just a couple minutes later. 2-2 with 15 minutes to go now. Shots are 28-26 in the final half of the third. This is you know, a much closer game than last time. Four goals scored in total as opposed to 12. Five minutes to go. The next one is likely the winner. Do we have a hero in regulation? No, we're off to overtime. Shots end 32 to 30 for us, and it's a 2 2 game headed to overtime. Overtime here at Ball Arena. Great view. A goal for us puts us up 2 0, headed back to Vancouver. A goal for the Avalanche ties the series and makes it a best of five. Here comes Kale McCarr. A couple of nice moves that he can't get through. Hughes. Now Lakaramaki skates up with it. Very good. Lakaramaki, one T. Weird. What are you doing? You're taking a 1T before the puck's even on your stick, and then you... Re then Time to retire, Reinhardt. Yes, I agree. Then you answer by just tripping the guy right in front of you. You fan on the 1T, then trip the guy for taking the puck away. Time to retire, buddy. Uh, so last game against the Oilers, we had a couple of big penalty kills. Let's see if we can do it again here. Defensive zone draw. Callum Ritchie's out there with Kopitar out. So big responsibility on his shoulder. Let's go Avalanche 0 for 3 on the power play with 3 shots tonight. Let's do it. Here's a 2 on 1 for the Avalanche with Kovalenko coming in. Kovalenko stopped by Jones. The rebound is cleared out before a little rebound at a short angle goes and Jones hangs on. With that nice little Iowa Wild helmet. Of course he's still wearing that. That makes sense. Here's McKinnon with some space. He gets through one, gets a big shot off, rebound in front, couple big saves from Jones. Scramble in the crease and finally Hironik's going to pass it out to Pedersen who skates it out. And loses that one. Kovalenko poked away. Good. And then Ratu gets tripped. Now it's going to be four on four for 33 seconds. And then a power play coming our way. Great. Shane uh, Pinto getting two for tripping as we will go to four on four action. Very, very good. Ratu had a little breakout chance there, but got tripped in the neutral zone. Or just, sorry, just as he was getting towards the neutral zone at the top of the blue line there. So four on four action for a little bit. Then a minute and a half of power play for us as we pretty much do away with that penalty kill. Very good. Miller in the corner, in front, broken up by Kovalenko, and of course, another trip! <laughs> the trips, the trips, the trips. Oh, wow, so we're gonna have a four on three penalty kill for three seconds, and then another power play, then it'll be four on four, and then another power play for the Avalanche. Oh, make it stop. Richie wins that back against McKinnon. Ooh, and then a shot from the point. Just a piece of the glove. Tarasov got on that one. Now it's going to be a power play for the next 30 seconds for the Avalanche. Gerard walks in. Jones sprawling to make that one. My goodness. And he'll hang on now. 17 seconds of power play to kill. And we'll finally be back to five on five. 
So back at five on five now. Offensive zone draw for the third line. Richie put Coles and Hyman are out. One back by Richie to Susie. McIsaac, cool blocker save from Tarasov. Put Coles in to Hyman in front. Big save. No. Richie, little two on one now. Richie with Hyman on net. Oh, rings it off the post. Zach Hyman with a great chance there. Lawton can't get through. Little brouhaha there. In front, Texi. Can't get the good shot away on the rebound as there's a defenseman there to tie him up. Not sure who that was. Now here's Kuzmenko and that shot. Short hill scores! Andre Kuzmenko! The Canucks win in overtime after a bunch of. And then the skates go through the boards. Just so much bad AI. The gloves going through people's shoulders and backs. Love it. We love it. Andre Kuzmenko on that fourth line. Is that his first even strength goal? I don't know if you saw one in the slow sim. Is that his first even strength goal in years? I don't mean to disrespect him, but it's been a long time. Kuzmenko with the shot, hits off the defender and in. All right, there we get our finally a little bit of EA Voodoo goal after Ristolainen's uh, own goal against the Oilers in round number one. Kuzmenko gets the game winner. We win both games on the road. Shots end 45 to 43 for the Avalanche. 43 saves from Hunter Jones. Hronik gets second star. I would think Jones gets first star. Let me see right here. Yes, he does. 956 save percentage. We win both on the road and we head back to Vancouver with a 2-0 series lead on a seven-game win streak. So the Avalanche held us to just three goals, which is pretty low compared to what we've been doing recently. 3-2 victory in that one. What's up down in the AHL? We're looking for 9-3 win last game against the Manitoba Moose. Looking good. Up 2-1 in the conference final there. All right. Looking good in Abbotsford. So back home now in Vancouver on a seven-game win streak. Up 2-0 in this series. Let's keep the good times rolling. Although we still don't have Kopitar for a few more games, we have shown that we're able to do it without him. Let's stay strong defensively. Let's play a good game in front of Hunter Jones. And let's keep that same level of confidence in front of the home fans. First period, and it's 0-0 after 20. Shots are 10-9. And we have a stable first period. Second period action now in Vancouver. And we lead 1-0. Atu Ratu on the power play, extending his team lead in goals. Shots are 22-17. We capitalize on a great power play opportunity. And we now lead 1-0, headed into the third period. Very low scoring first couple periods and it's put Coles in with his seventh making it two and Ratu with another makes it three. The floodgates slowly opening a bit here but the Avalanche could come back with a power play chance. They don't and Hyman scores on the power play. Make it four nothing Vancouver. Power play for the Avalanche killed off. Oh my, from a tight 1-0 game, we were saying what's going to happen in this series. This is going to be a tighter defensive battle but no, the floodgates open in the end and it is a fifth Shutout for Hunter Jones, but Colson scores again. Ratu gets a couple, and Zach Hyman throws in one for good measure. Three stars in this one. Hunter Jones makes 27 saves. Ratu, two goals, and Hyman, a goal and two assists. And we are now on an eight-game winning streak with the chance to sweep the Avalanche out of the Western Conference Final and book our ticket to the Stanley Cup Final. Who would have thunk it? It's not over yet, but oh my... Now 14 goals, right, for Ratu. 14 goals in 14 games. Put Coles in with 7 goals, a goal every other game on average. And Hunter Jones, 939, still the 939 save percentage and 1.97 goals against. 5 shutouts out of 11 wins. So only 6 shutouts, 6 wins that weren't by shutout, 5 wins that were by shutout. Wow, I am speechless once again. Speechless once again. Let's try and close out the sweep here at home in front of the home fans. We've done it. We did it last series. Let's try and do it again after we did it to the Ducks. Let's do it to the Avalanche. With a big 4-0 victory in the rear view mirror, let's see if we can close it out and continue to build that uh, camaraderie with a little bit of a break before the Stanley Cup Finals. Not over yet, but we're liking how it's looking. First period, 1-0 Avalanche. McKinnon opens up the scoring. Ooh, shot 17-5 in that first period. The Avalanche came out firing in all cylinders. Kind of like game one a little bit early, but just like in game one, we answer back. LeCaramacki ties it. McKinnon gets his second, but then McIsaac ties it up soon after. 2-2 in the first 25 minutes, four goals scored, despite being outshot now, 25-8 to eight through the first half hour. Second period ends 2-2, two to two. shots are 26-15. to 15. LeCaramacki and McIsaac scoring for us. I love this man, Jared McIsaac. It's a 2-2 two -two tie after 40. If we win this third period, we're off the Stanley Cup final. If the Avalanche do, we're off to game five back in Colorado. 
2-2 game. They're close to doubling our shots over here, but we're hanging on tight. And we're making a little bit of a push as well. Now 35-21. to 21. Not really. Avalanche still pulling away. But there's Ristolainen! Our dear beloved son gives us the go-ahead goal. Will it be enough to push us through to the Stanley Cup final? Into the final two minutes. Let's go in and check this out now. Into the final minute. 103 to go. Ristolainen, four blocked shots and the go-ahead goal. One minute left in the third period here at home. In front, we're making a weird shot from a wind timer from, uh, hold on, in front, oh, sprawling his Tarasov. Can't keep up with my brain here. A couple of great chances there. Tarasov make big, making some big saves. Ranton coming in now. Avon pulling their goalie. McKinnon blocker save that big blocker of Hunter Jones. Ranton in. For the points, Makar. Yeah, that's blocked by his own man, McKinnon. Byram, Makar, Ranton in. Ooh, just the toe save by Hunter Jones. And we're going to take, do I put, I'm going to keep Pedersen in the first line out. As the Avalanche aren't taking a timeout either here. And it's going to be 6 on 5. Empty net. Defensive zone draw with 35.1 seconds to go. 24 seconds to go. McKinnon. Rantanen. Byram! Big save! Jones sprawling! Oh my goodness. Full pressure's on. Ratu and exits the territory at least. 14 seconds to go. Makar brings it back in. Kale Makar skating in. Byram with a lane! Scores! Ah, uh, Bowen Byram! In the final seconds with the goalie pulled, with eight seconds to go, first line was getting tired. Tie game as we'll likely see overtime here, in tight, no one wants to go after him, just let him walk in, that's it. Just let him streak in, that's it, no problem. Put, make sure you push the other players out of the way so that you can have an even clearer path. Alright, <clears throat> we're tied up with 8.9 seconds to go, 3-3 three, three game. That'll be it for regulation, we're off to overtime. The shots are 43-29 to 29 through regulation in favor of the Avalanche, so we, we shouldn't be surprised that this game is tied. We were a bit lucky to be up 3-2 to two on Ristolainen's goal. Overtime now as a goal for us. We'll, we'll book our ticket, crazy to say, to the Stanley Cup final, but a goal for the Avalanche will push this back to Colorado. Rantanen, Kovalenko skating in. He gets pushed off the puck. 41 saves from Jones tonight. Reinhardt loses that draw one time on the set piece. Good save as Jones slides across. Sam Reinhardt. Coming into Colorado territory, sells the puck. JT, ooh, shoulder saved by Tarasov. Now Makar gonna get it out of his zone. Battle in the neutral zone now. Uh, of course, that's a clap. That's I was about to say. This is a perfect recipe for a penalty. A mix of players like that all coming together. There's always a slash from a stick lift that's missed, or a, a trip from a poke check that's missed. Trying a stick lift across the board. That's it. Try to stick lift with four players all right next to each other. Good idea. All right, so we were seconds away from winning it. Maybe we should have stayed in the slow sim, but I wanted to see the uh, the, Ke the Clarence Campbell. I wanted to see it, so I came into it. Hopefully it doesn't spell uh, disaster. Devontae's gets that on that. Oh my goodness, here's a little EA glitch and goal, of course. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> That's it, little shot on net. Our own player almost puts it in our own net. He gets hit. He falls in the net. Both he and the goalie have no desire to shoot. Lanniskog even barely has a chance to shoot. He's skating into the net. And then there you go. Oh, this is such a bad game. And I say that as someone who wants to love the game. I have no hate in my heart. I'm not trying to be a hater. It's just objective. It's ridiculous. Come on, how can you put this game out year after year? Shots end 49 to 33 for the Avalanche. We could have had the sweep. We could have kept the winning streak going. I guess I shouldn't have jumped in. I wanted to see the Clarence S. Campbell, though. Injury down in the AHL. Ah, it's unfortunate. All right, so the Avalanche won a game to avoid the sweep. Now we're going to try to win it back in Colorado in game five. Uh, I'm just going to say let's try and do it. Let's try to just bulldoze our way through and not even have to think about it. That loss should not have happened. First period, bang, one nothing at two. Second period, eh, down two one. Tex short shorthanded and Pinto even strength. We're down two to one, out shooting twenty nine to twenty here in the third period of game five. Now just like that, we're in the third period of game five. Avalanche power play killed off by the Canucks. We're getting all the shots on net, but now of course Tarasov gets a little taste of a victory, and now there you go. Here come the Avalanche now, of course, 3-1 Colorado. We score at least three goals or more, between three and nine goals every game. And here we're going to score one goal as Tarasov makes 33 saves. Okay, keep on going. Don't even care. Go on to game six back at home. Don't care. Game six, keep it rolling. We're just padding the stats. I'm not stopping. 
Calder Cup Final. There you go against the Rochester Americans. Love it. Down in the AHL. Game six. Here we go. This should, We shouldn't even be here. Let's just win. Take care of business. TCB, baby. TCB. First period. Bang, 2 nothing. Susie and LeCaramacchi. Second period. Bang, 4 nothing. Hironik and Pedersen. All right. Now we have a little bit of comfort. I was about to get a little scared here for game seven. I was about to have a little bit of a... I don't know what I was going to have exactly, but it wasn't going to be good for my health. 4 nothing here in the third period. Late. A very, very long power play opportunity for us. That doesn't go anywhere. But we're going to hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, for the second time in three years, your Vancouver Canucks are off to the Stanley Cup final. 25 save shutout from Hunter Jones. It was meant to be. Get him another shutout. Shots end 40 to 25 in this one. Jones first star. Karamaki a goal and an assist. Carson Soucy with a goal. And it should have been in four games. It ends up being in six games. But we are through to the Stanley Cup final to face either the Devils or the Canadians as they are off to seven games themselves. Oh my goodness. What a run it's been. From that horrible second half to getting ourselves to another Stanley Cup final. The second time in three years. Both times as the wild card team. Let's see who we'll face. Kopitar's back to full health as well. But let's see who we're going to face. Uh, we don't know yet. Okay, so actually, we'll take a moment to pause before we look at who we're facing to just see the points through three rounds. All right. Whew, so sorry that I ran through games five and six quickly. I was just angry about game four. But all's well that ends well. In 17 games so far, Aturatu has 15 goals and 25 points. Stone has 24. Pedersen has 22. Quinn Hughes with 16. Miller with 15. Zach Hyman, 12 and a plus 9 in 17 games. Sam Reinhardt, 11 in 17. And yes, Kuzmenko, 3 power play goals for us. That was his first even strength goal in 2 years. He has 10 points in 17 games. There you go. Hronik with 10 as a plus 8. Lekaramaki, 9 points plus 7. Put Coles in 7 goals plus 11, 8 points. Hannafin, 6 points plus 7. McIsaac, 5 points plus 15. Anderson Dolan with 5. Kopitar, 5 in 12, and he's back to full health. Susi, 4. Richie, 4. Risto with 2 goals and a plus 11. Coleman, 2 assists and a plus 2. Good for you. But we got to get Kopitar back in here. And in the goaltending, all rise once again. All rise for Hunter Jones. 12 wins, 6 shutouts. Now it, it was crazy. It was ridiculous. Now it's just flabbergasting. 12, 3, and 2 with 6 shutouts, a 940 save percentage, and 2.01 goals against average. Unfathomable. How does he do it? All right. So headed into the Stanley Cup final. We don't know if it'll be the Devils or the Canadians. Let's check it out. Will it be an all-Canadian matchup? Or will we face the Devils, just like Mighty Joe Maple's prediction said? Here we go. In the 2028 Stanley Cup final, after losing to the Rangers in 2026, we will be facing the... New Jersey Devils. Wow. The New Jersey Devils take it in seven games against the Canadians. They are a 50-win team. What did they do this season? They were the third best team in the league. We took down the Oilers. We took down the... Anyone else who was a top team? The Avalanche, the Ducks. Yeah, none that were top, top, though. So here are the Devils. They were 50, 26, and 6 on the year. On their road to the Stanley Cup final, they took down the Flyers in 6, the President's Trophy winning Rangers in 6, and then the Canadians in 7 to face us now in the Stanley Cup final. Last time we faced the Rangers, this time we faced the Devils up in that Upper East, Northeast region. Let's check out their lineup now here in 2028. I'm not sure who they would have. I'm sure like Jack Hughes, uh, Timo Meyer in there. But who else would be here? Not a team we see very often. The New Jersey Devils. All right, so their first line, Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, and Timo Meyer. Wow. Second line, Alex Holtz, Blake Lazat, and Callie Yarncrow. Tanner Pearson, Jake Evans, and Dawson Mercer on the third. Yessi Puglia-Yarvi, Charlie Coyle, and Anders Lee on the fourth. Wow. So Bratt with 23 points in 19 games. Also a plus 19. Jack Hughes, 13 goals and 24 points. And Timo Meyers, 7 goal. Timo Meyer, excuse me, 7 goals and 21 points, plus 18. Yarncrow, 16. Lazat with, what, 15. Holtz with 19. Pearson, 4. Evans, 9. Mercer, 8. 
Defense, it's Jonas Siegenthaler with da Dougie Hamilton. Interesting. At 34 years of age, Dougie still got at 14 points and plus 11. And Siegenthaler's a plus 16. Very underrated defenseman. Nikishin with Nemich. Woo! And third pair, Luke Hughes with Connor Clifton. Hughes and Clifton, the, the, the hopefully something we could exploit there. Negative 9 and negative 6. So, all right. Goaltending, it's Vitek Vanacek, 85 overall, 912 save percentage. On the year, 43 wins, 916 save percentage. Hunter Jones has as many shutouts as he does all did all season. He appeared in 72 games as well. 2.65 goals against average, but right now, 912 and 2.96. Looking very good for the Devils. Wow, backed up by Akira Schmid. And scratches are Thomas, Greer, and Mata. All right, so it's a strong devil squad here. Pretty well-rounded throughout. Lazat as second-line center. Their center depth is what we want, want to exploit. Maybe even their left-winger depth and their third-pair defense. But all around, this is a Stanley Cup final squad. They're here for a reason. They have a very scary top line and top six in general. Wow, 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 wow. The last time we were here, we fell in five games to the Rangers. Somehow, we're back after that abysmal second half of the season. But we believed. We believed, and we have made it back to the Stanley Cup final. And let's get Kopitar back in the lineup. Of course, Kopitar is going to be back in. So I'll fix the lines here, and then we'll be back in just a second. All right, so Kopitar back in the lineup, and now under normal circumstances, I would say let's keep Reinhardt on the second line. Instead of 0 plus 1 on the second and third, it would be plus 2 plus 2. Reinhardt has also done better, 5 goals, 6 assists in 17 games versus Kopitar, 1 goal, one goal 4 assists in 12. But we saw how well the lines did and how well this team did and how much scoring we had, the plethora of scoring when the lines were like this. So those lines were just too good for me to say we can't go back to them. But if we get into a little bit of a jam, Kopitar and Reinhardt swapping will be likely my first course of action. So that being said, the lines are back to as they were. We went on that crazy tear at the end of round number one and throughout round number two. Now with Kopitar back in, he will center the second line with Miller and LeCaramacchi to kick off the 2028 20, Stanley Cup final, ladies and gentlemen, here at Prudential Center in New Jersey. I forget the Devils' history exactly through our Sims so far. They may have won a Stanley Cup, because I, I saw that they had a lot of games played maybe in year number one. Maybe they made a Stanley Cup final or something. But they've been a good team throughout this franchise mode so far. They're facing the 42, 33, and 7 Canucks. They're going to think, we're overachieving. We shouldn't be where we are. Hunter Jones is definitely overperforming as well. He's not as good as many are making him out to be, but we know that he is, and we know that we can believe in this squad for once. Something we haven't said in a long time. We can believe in this squad. Game one of the 2028 Stanley Cup final. Gentlemen, the stage is yours. In New Jersey at Prudential Center, here we go. First period, it's 1-0 Devils early. Timo Meyer with a backbreaker, scoring with three seconds left in the first period. That's a big one. Shots and 15-9 to nine in our favor. That late goal was... That one really hurt. Second period now, we've been... All right, I was about to say, we've come back from down 1-0 after the first period many times before, and Sam Reinhardt gets the power play goal to put us back level. Bring us back level, excuse me. Second period ends 2-1 Devils, though, as Bratt scores a shorthanded goal. You gotta be careful for Jesper Bratt on the power, when we're on the power play on that penalty kill unit for the Devils. Shots are 27-15 to 15 through 40 minutes, close to double in our favor, but it's 2-1 New Jersey. Make it 3-1 as Hughes scores on the first shot of the period. We're down by two here in the third. Power play Vancouver kills off by the Devils. Not the greatest start for us here. Still another half of a period to go. 34 to 23 of the shots and Vanacek is putting on a clinic here as we have just five minutes left to go. It's not coming yet and it looks like that'll be all she wrote. As we drop game one on the road. Shots end 39 to 26 but Vitek Vanacek makes 38 saves for first star honors. Brat a goal and two assists and Timo Meyer with a goal as well. And the Devils will win game number one on the road to give them a 1-0 lead here in the 2028 Stanley Cup Final. I like our lines. We got to see more scoring. Reinhardt did score a power play goal. I'm close to putting him back on second line center. But I want to give Kopitar one more game. He just got back into it, back from injury. Let's give him another game here and we'll reassess moving into game number three. 
as it was a rare occasion of only scoring one goal. Vanacek, I had seen actually, he had shut out the Canadians in Game 7. So, a, sh a Game 7 shutout and only one goal against in Game Number 1. We gotta break that confidence a little bit here, and this is a great chance to do it in Game Number 2. First period, 2-0 Vancouver early, exactly what I was talking about. Kuzmenko on the power play to open it up, then Aturatu even strength, Mr. Power Play Andre Kuzmenko. Shots are 14-12 to 12 through 20, and we have a nice 2-0 lead that we definitely want to see ourselves add to here in the second period. Power play early for the Devils in the second and it was an extended chance for them but we kill it off second period ends two nothing oh three nothing Pedersen added one more shots are 27 to 25 through 40 and we have a three nothing lead here in New Jersey in game number two great little cushion and Hyman adds to it four nothing with 15 minutes to go power play Devils not over yet but it's getting more it's getting closer and closer and that should be enough to seal it 5 nothing, Mr. Uh, what should I call him? Mr. Rocket? Ratu makes it 5 nothing. Anderson Dolan, 6 nothing. Rocket Ratu. That's what I'm going to call him. Rocket Ratu. There we go. And it's a 6 nothing. Oh, guess what? Shutout for Hunter Jones. His seventh shutout of the postseason. What's the record? 37 save shutouts. We outshoot the Devils 39 to 37 and win 6 nothing at Prudential Center. 37 save shout out from Hunter Jones. Let me go back in time to past GM data and just say thank you for that trade. A goal and two assists from Pedersen, two goals from Ratu, Rocket Ratu, and we're, uh, we tie the series up at one now. 17th goal of the postseason from Ratu, 6 nothing victory to tie the series at one, make it a best of five, headed back to Vancouver. In the AHL, it is a 3-1 series for Rochester. Not looking good there, but we did make the Calder Cup final, so there's something to be said about that. We score six goals, no need to touch anything. I just want to quickly pause to check what the record is for postseason shutouts. And the record actually is seven. So Hunter Jones has tied Martin Brodeur for the most shutouts in a single postseason as Brodeur and the Devils had seven shutouts back in 2003. Martin Brodeur, look at that. Hunter Jones making history as he sits tied at number one with Brodeur. Can he pass Brodeur facing his old team, the Devils now? He just needs one more shutout. So how about that though? Seven, even if he ends at seven. Oh my goodness. Tying an NHL record. Game three, we're back in Vancouver for our first Stanley Cup final game in a couple of years. It wasn't too great against the Rangers, but now we're here. Here we are against the Devils. It's a 1-1 series and it's a best of five starting here at Rogers Place. First period and it's 1-0 Canucks after 20. Rocket Ratu make it 1-0. 13 to 10 of the shots in our favor, and we have a lead through the first. Second period, starting with a power play, killed off by the Devils. Second period, and 3-0 Anderson Dolan and Zach Hyman on the power play! Shots are 26-20. Do you believe, ladies and gentlemen? 3-0 Canucks through 20. It's not over yet. Third period action now, and don't... I, I know you're thinking it. I know you're thinking it, and that's okay. Halfway through the third period, shots are 32-29. Oh my goodness. Oh my, power play Devils. Power play Devils, killed off. Oh my goodness, Hunter Jones has made history. The eighth shutout in a single postseason. The most in NHL history. In his first ever postseason, he does it as, I don't know if he's still counted as a rookie. I guess he's still a rookie in the NHL. But he does it in his first postseason. A 33 save shutout to make it back to back shutouts. His eighth of the postseason, and he sits alone at number one, passing Martin Brodeur against his old team, the Devils. First star honors at home. The, the Rogers place is going ballistic. Ratu and Hyman with the second and third star honors as we win 3 0. And Kuzmenko's out for the rest of the postseason with a concussion. Ah. Oh. Too bad. Kuzmenko! I was just coming around on you, Kuzmenko. So Kuzmenko will end the postseason with five goals and 13 points in 20 games as a plus one. Five power play points, four power play goals. Kuzmenko, we'll miss his production. We will. And we'll miss you in the lineup. Oh, that is too bad. That is really too bad. Before I put uh, Coleman in the lineup, I just want to see Hunter Jones here. 944 save percentage. He's making history. Hunter Jones. Okay, so fourth line. We're going to get Coleman in here. Thankfully, it's just a fourth line spot, but we will have to make some changes on the power play, so I'll just take care of that.
Okay, so Blake Coleman back in the lineup. Welcome back, Blake Coleman. He had two assists and was a plus two in five games played so far, so I'm happy to have him back in the lineup, but sad that Kuzmenko had to go. If we're going to win, I want to do it with him because he's likely, I don't know, is he likely going? I don't know, I don't know, after what he's been doing so far. But back-to-back -back shutouts from Hunter Jones, making history in this 2028 postseason. Now headed into game number four, still in Vancouver at Rogers Arena. Do I keep saying Rogers Place? I'm uh, here at Rogers Arena for game four. Trying to go up three games to one, but the Devils want to tie it up at two, headed back to New Jersey. This postseason is not over yet. The Stanley Cup final still has a lot left to be played, but a win here would go a very long way. Let's keep up the same momentum that we've been having, ladies and gentlemen. The top nine is still the same. We can do it. Do it for Andre. Let's hit it. First period, and it is 1-0 Devils after 20. Anders Lee, the former captain of the Islanders. They got a little captain veteran experience in here as well. It's not just us. Shots 11-8 to eight after 20. And Anders Lee making the Devils, giving the Devils a 1-0 lead. The first goal against Jones in a couple games. Second period, 3-1. Pulley makes it 2-0. Another goal from that fourth line. And then for our fourth line comes in. Blake Coleman, welcome. He scores his first goal of the postseason to make it 2-1. to one. And Then Dougie Hamilton makes it a 3-1 Devils game. So the Devils are up by two. We're out shooting them 20-19. to 19. This game's not over yet. Here in the third period, we still have a chance to rally back. Only a goal from Coleman on our fourth line. Where's that top nine scoring? And there it is, JT Miller making it 3-2. to two. We are back within one. And there's Quinn Hughes, the captain. Perfect timing, and the Karamaki makes it 4-3! to three. From down 3-1 to up 4-3, with four minutes to go! Do you believe, ladies and gentlemen? And the Canucks take the victory! This is unbelievable! We have not seen efforts like this from this team in years! From down 3-1 in the third period, halfway through the third, they fight back with three goals in like three, four minutes! And we win 4-3 to three from down 3-1. to one. There is the passion we've been waiting so long to see. Do not go gentle into that good night. As Jonathan LeCaramacchi gets the game-winning goal. And we are now one win away. This was about to be a 2-2 series. Best 2 out of 3. And we now have to win one of the next 4 games. That is a huge difference maker. A huge difference maker. And we now have a chance to win on the road in New Jersey at the Prudential Center in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Final. I don't know what to say. This has been incredible. This entire run from start to finish has been incredible. We're now one win away. Let's, let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's, DM Data is walking into the locker room here in New Jersey. Looking at all the faces. Atu Ratu. Traded from the Islanders. Once a top prospect. Then drafted 52nd in 2021 by the Islanders. Traded in the Bo Horvat deal. Has had a great career. Rising up better and better every year. So-so regular season this year. But an incredible postseason. 18 goals in 21 games. Elias Pettersson. The 5th overall pick back in 2017. Finally with a chance to give him something he's been waiting so long for. Mark Stone with the Stanley Cup under his belt already in Vegas. Comes to Vancouver around that halfway point, and he's been a huge part. Maybe even Conn Smythe consideration as well, a huge piece of that top line. Jonathan LeCaramacchi drafted 15th overall in 2022. Wasn't growing super well, we've stuck with him, and here he is playing in the middle six role. Anze Kopitar, we signed him out of free agency, a big one-year deal. Then we said, you know what, let's try and keep him for one more, and he stayed on for another. 40 years old now, he wants a cup to end off his career. That's why he came and stayed in Vancouver. He wants one more cup. JT Miller in that big deal with the Rangers way back when. What year was that in now? Sorry, with the Lightning, yes, after he had been traded to the Lightning at the deadline from the Rangers. And then we got him from the Lightning, yes, of course. He's been here since 2019-20. Tough year for him this year. Could this be the end of JT Miller? It's very possible. We want to get him his cup before it's too late. Vasily Pudkolzin, the 10th overall pick in 2019. Thought of by many perhaps to be a bust. Seven goals, ten points. We want to get him a cup. Sam Reinhardt, a franchise mode legend with the Columbus Blue Jackets, Data 782 Hall of Fame nominee. We picked him up in free agency. It's now his fourth season with his hometown Vancouver Canucks. We want him to get a boyhood cup. Zach Hyman, we picked him up from the Penguins. He's been waiting for his cup. I'm not sure if he got one with the Oilers. Uh, no, he did not. So he's been with the Maple Leafs, the Oilers, the Penguins. Now a chance here with the Canucks. What a moment this would be for the 35-year-old. On the fourth line, Jared Anderson Dolan, we signed him as depth. 
one year in the AHL, two years in the NHL, three years with our organization. Callum Ritchie, we saved him from Colorado being buried on the fourth line as like a 77 overall. We let him breathe in the AHL. We helped him to grow and nourish. And now at 23 years of age, sophomore season, great year. Got him in the Thatcher Demko trade. And of course, Blake Coleman here for now, parts of a couple of years. I don't mean to go through for so long, but just talking about the, it's been five years. Quinn Hughes, the captain of this team, drafted seventh overall. Philip Hronik, who came in the big deal with Detroit, second round pick in 2016. Rasmus, our dear beloved son, Ristolainen, it would be great to get him a cup. Noah Hannafin, who we signed in free agency, it's now his fourth season here in Vancouver. Great 28 point season. Jared, Mr. Plus Minus McIsaac, who we claimed off waivers again. And Carson Soucy, huge contract. We kept him around on a cheaper contract. And now here he is trying to get his cup. We have, of course, Tom Willander drafted, what? Uh, I forget when he was drafted, but a first-round pick of the of the Canucks, who we've had grow. Luko Pekalukunen would get his ring, but whatever. Kuzmenko, of course, coming over from the KHL. Great first season. Great few seasons, but downhill since then. But the biggest ones, the biggest ones would be the goaltenders. Hunter Jones making history this postseason with eight shutouts and a 942 save percentage with 15 wins and 21 appearances. And although Casey DeSmith hasn't played yet this postseason, we know who he is. We know that we would not be here this season or in this franchise moment, but especially this season where every win mattered without Casey DeSmith. We would not be here without him, and we want to get him his ring. Maybe he has a ring with the Penguins, but he definitely hasn't been a part of a Stanley Cup winning squad as he has been here in Vancouver. This is our squad, ladies and gentlemen. This is our squad. Talking in the room now. Boys, this is our team. Five years. A lot of you have been here since I came in five years ago. Since myself and my team of AGMs came in five years ago. We've done a lot of good since then. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of journeys along the way. We're now one win away. Can you believe that? From bringing this city their first Stanley Cup. Waiting for almost 60 years. 60 years. So much heartache. So much disappointment in some of their final appearances. 94, 2011, 2026. Now here we are in 2028. A lot more heartbreak than just those three years, but here we are now in 2028. A chance to end it. A chance to make history. And a chance to fulfill all of our greatest dreams. Gentlemen, the stage is yours. The stage is yours. Game five, Stanley Cup final, one win away. The controller is down. Early power play for the Devils here in the first period. Killed off shots for nothing in the first few minutes. But we're back in it. Jack Hughes will open the scoring. Hasn't been too much of this series. And the Devils are up one nothing early in the first. Power play Devils once again towards the end now. That's killed off. Couple of big penalty kills by the, the uh, Vancouver penalty killers at the end. Hold on, Jared McIsaac! Mr. Plus Minus with a huge goal at the end of the first period. And we're tied at one heading into the second. Shots tied at nine. Score tied at one. Jared McIsaac. How is he doing this? I'm so glad we put him in. I'm glad we kept him. Mr. Plus Minus. And he's been adding some offense. 1-1 one, one after 20. Let's get back out there, boys. Second period here in New Jersey. Let's go. Big goal for McIsaac. And JT Miller. There he is. And, ah, but then Brat ties it right back up six seconds later. All right. 2-2. Two, two. Approaching the halfway point of the second period of this game. And here it, and it's come and gone. 2-2. Two, two, it remains. Shots are still pretty even into the final five minutes. Do we have a late goal to give some momentum into the third in the final 30 seconds? No. Shots end 23-18. to 18, Late push by the Devils. 2-2 two, two after 40. Miller and Bratt scoring for their respective teams. And now here we are. Win this period and you win the Stanley Cup, gentlemen. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. 2-2, two, two, third period action. Let's go out there and leave everything on the ice. Third period power play early. Power play killed off by the Devils. But then Rasmus, our dear beloved son, Ristolainen, gives us the go-ahead goal. Will it be enough? It almost was enough to push us to the Stanley Cup final. Will it be enough to win us the Stanley Cup? Rasmus Ristolainen's goal has put us up 3-2. to two. Final five minutes now. Final two minutes. Let's slow it down a little bit. Final two minutes now. Going. Let's go ten seconds at a time. The Devils are pushing late with a minute and a half to go. 
3-2 Canucks in the final minute now. It is the final minute. 20 seconds and we're hopping in. 58 years later is the fifth time the charm. We are 21 seconds away from finding out. Ristolainen with the go-ahead goal. Five block shots tonight. Here's Tanner Pearson. Big hit there. Mark Stone, they pulled their goalie with 15 seconds to go. Do we have enough here? 10 seconds left. Devils get the puck. Now they're going to come back for one last push. Dougie Hamilton to Dawson Mercer. Poked away on net. Stopped. Rebound from Holton. Tight. Scrabble by the net. It's going to be enough. And the Vancouver Canucks are your 2028 Stanley Cup champions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. Five years later, in the fifth year of our mandate, in the craziest of seasons, who would have thunk that this would be the one? Five years into our mandate, and 58 years later, we have finally brought a Stanley Cup to Vancouver. We have done it on one of the craziest postseasons in channel history. And Mark Stone gets the con Smythe with his 30-point postseason. I would have loved that too to get it. Maybe we can vote on that. But Mark Stone, there he is. The acquisition near the deadline. And he gets the con Smythe. I'm, my mind's going a million miles an hour here as the Stanley Cup comes out. Wow, the first Canadian team to win, I think, since the Canadians in 93, unless there was one that I missed. Unless, maybe the Leafs won the Cup, but still. Oh my goodness, Gary, get on out here. Well, hello, New Jersey! Vancouver, you've been waiting 58 years. I won't keep you waiting any longer. Quinn Hughes, it is your honor. And Hughes raises the cup above his head in New Jersey. I would have loved to have done this in uh, Vancouver. But whenever you get a chance to win the Stanley Cup after almost six decades, you take that chance. Quinn Hughes raises the cup. Next up, we got it. I'm going Ratu, I think. You know, no, the first up has got to be Hunter Jones. Hunter Jones, first and foremost, with the greatest goaltending postseason in NHL history, you might, we'd probably say. The Conn Smythe could have gone to him as well. Ratu, Stone, Jones raises that cup from the Iowa Wild to winning the Stanley Cup a few months later. Wow, what a journey it's been for him as well. Next up, I think I'm going... I think I'm going Atu Ratu for the next one. There's so many players that I want to give it to, but Atu Ratu is next. Uh, Rocket Ratu raising the Stanley Cup above his head. Well, well earned and well deserved. Atu Ratu. Wow. Next up, who's it going to be? Maybe Sam Reinhardt next as the hometown boy. Taking a little spin with the cup. Next up, Reinhardt, Stone, Kopitar. I think it's got to be Reinhardt. So many, even Veronica, I'd want to give it to. But next up, Sam Reinhardt, the hometown kid. Sam Reinhardt, his fourth season in Vancouver, comes from Florida. And he raises the Stanley Cup. We've been wanting to make it work with him. And he finally gets what he's been waiting for so long. Doing it with the team that he grew up loving. I would think from Vancouver, right? Hometown guy. Ladies and gentlemen, break out the cameras. Take out the phones. Get ready for the screenshots. Gather around for one last picture. I promise that it will last a lifetime. Huh? Galena as coach as well. It doesn't feel real. It went so quick and had such a roller coaster from being at the bottom to the top. It does not feel real. From game seven of round one to here we are. 20, 27, 28 Stanley Cup champions. Get ready to read them out. Quinn Hughes, captain. Jared Anderson, Dolan, Blake Coleman, Casey DeSmith, Noah Hannafin, Philip Ronick, Zach Hyman, Hunter Jones, Andre Kopitar, Andre Kuzmenko, Lakaramaki, Uko Pekalukinen, McIsaac Miller, Pedersen, Patkolzin, Reinhardt, Ristalainen, Richie, Ratu, Susi, Stone, and Willander as Rasmus Ristalainen scores that Stanley Cup winning goal. How fitting. Shots end 35 to 28, and we come away with the victory 3 to 2 in game 5. First star, Hunter Jones. You would have thought that maybe the con Smythe goes to him. Maybe we can do a little revisionist history. We can switch it up or something. But we are Stanley Cup champions. You had to think that it was possible, right? A wild card team like us, the poise, the overalls. But it really came down to the line changes. Those line changes from game seven to the end. Those line changes are what did it. Wow, let's end off the season now. Vancouver wins the Stanley Cup, but we finish as runner-up in the Calder Cup Championship uh, down in Abbotsford. Let's see the awards in this one. I don't think we'll have any regular season awards, 
But let's see what the postseason and what the uh, season itself ends off as. So, yes, the Devils, okay, the Devils won two Cups in 24 and 25, wow. But no Canadian teams, I don't think. No, because this was year five. So, yes, of course, we were the first Canadian team to win the Cup since 1970. And we go back-to-back -back with the 1970 expansion. The Sabres win in 2027, and the Canucks win in 2028. Our expansion brothers doing it with them, that's great. What a story. What a story. Rangers won the President's Trophy. We, of course, won the Clarence S. Campbell Bowl. Well, individual awards, Cole Eiserman winning the Art Ross with Ottawa, Hart going to Nathan McKinnon in back-to-back -back years, the James Norris going to Adam Fox, Lady Bing to Kaprizov, Calder going to Moore, this guy in Philadelphia, Con Smythe to Mark Stone, but we'll think about that, Vezina to Ilya Sorokin in back-to-back -back years, same for the Jennings for going to Sorokin, Masterton to Andrew Peake, Jack Adams to the coach of the Kraken in back-to-back -back years, the Frank J. Selke going to Barkov, interesting, the Ryan O'Reilly Award going to him in back-to-back -back years again, McKinnon back-to-back -back Ted Lynn, and the Morris Richard going to Cole Iserman. Down in the AHL, any awards for us? The uh, Flames Farm team cleaned up. Alrighty. But it was just great to make that final nonetheless. Now let's see just the trail, the journey that was beating the Oilers in seven, sweeping the Ducks, Avalanche in six, and then the Devils in five. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Let's see the points in the total now when it comes to the end of the postseason. Mark Stone scored 30 points in 22 games, winning another Stanley Cup for him. Atu Ratu, 18 goals. I would think that he, if anyone's winning out of the skaters, it might be him. 28 points from him, four game-winning goals. Stone, those three out of his four were game winners. Elias Pettersson finally gets his Stanley Cup that he's been waiting for. He wasn't sure if he was going to stay on for his long long-term extension. He did, and it got him his cup in the end. 28 points from him. Our captain scores 20 points in 22 games as he beats his brother. Even think about the Hughes versus Hughes. What's wrong with me? All three Hughes brothers in the Stanley Cup final. Quinn Hughes defeats Jack and Luke to win the Stanley Cup, as now all the Hughes brothers have a Stanley Cup. JT Miller possibly ends off his Vancouver Canucks career with the Stanley Cup, 18 points in 22 games. Reinhardt, 14. Zach Hyman at the deadline acquisition, 14 points. Kuzmenko, 13 and 20. We got him his cup. Philip Hronick, 13. LaCare Mackey with 12. Pud Colson ends with 10 points. He slowed down with the goals, but still 10 points plus 12 from Vasily Pud Colson. Anderson Dolan, 7. Hannafin, 7 and a plus 12. Kopitar, 6 points in 17 games. Only one goal. Don't care. He gets another Stanley Cup under his belt. Callum Ritchie with 5. Susie, 4 points plus 11. Risto, 3 goals plus 15. That game-winning goal, the Stanley Cup winning goal. Wow, what a story! Willander, we kept him out after the injury, but then he just stayed out. So, not a knock to him, but this, the team was doing too well. And the goaltending, one last look at these historic numbers. Hunter Jones, 942 save percentage, 16-4-2 with 8 shutouts and a 1.95 goals against average. Wow, this is something I'm going to share in the Discord server. Of, and Sorry, the, and in the um, the franchise mode subreddit. Crazy. He had what? Like a, just like eight games of NHL experience. He was playing down in Iowa with good numbers. Never been in the postseason before aside from three losses last year in Iowa as well. And he comes to the NHL, comes to Vancouver, eight shutouts. If you add the regular season numbers, that's nine shutouts in like, whatever, 35 games or something. Hunter Jones. That's that's Data 72 Hall of Fame stuff right there. Stone had two. Pedersen, the top three scorers in the postseason. Macklin Celebrini at 25 with the Canadians. Wow, so let's start thinking about wrapping it up, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, I'm not sure how long the episode's going to be after the cutting, the editing, but it's been a long enough episode. Let's check out the retirement. Let's see the draft class. Let's see the, um, the progress reports. Let's sim the draft and see what the offseason has in store. Penguins pick first. The Bruins jump from 12 to 2. Wow. And Vegas from 7 to 3 in the draft lottery. Scouting's already been taken care of. Player retirements now. Is Kopitar calling it a career? Uh, no, he's not. But we won't be bringing him back. It'll be It's great that we got to end off the Stanley Cup with him as he's now 40 years old. Malkin retires, though, with 1,644 points at 41 years of age. Patty Kane retires with over almost 1,600 points. Giroux calls it a career. Pavelski at 43 retires. Stamkos at 38. Phil Kessel, former Canuck as well. Jeff Skinner, Taylor Hall, former Canuck David Perron. Any other former Canucks out here? Mark Giordano at how old was he? 44. Still 78 overall. Mark Giordano, wow. 
Lee retires. Um, no other former players that I'm seeing there, but some other big names retiring there in the NHL. And for goalies, uh, Brian Elliott calls it a career. Same for Yaroslav Halak, both 43 years old. Talbot, Markstrom, Kemper, Allen, some big goalies retiring. But no retirements from our team. Good to know. But Kopitar, we gave him his Stanley Cup. We did what we had to do with him. We will allow him to go into free agency this offseason. Pavelski and Malkin are both now coaches as well. Coach retirements, anyone? Sorry, no one in Abbotsford, no. Anyone in Vancouver, no retirements for the coaches. Draft interviews, actually the draft is just fully uncovered. We have nothing to do for draft interviews. It is just stacked in terms of uncovering the prospects. Let's take a moment now to look at the progress reports before we look at contracts, free agency, draft. We want to close out the episode here. Pedersen up to a 92 overall right now. Hironic got an 87. Any other uh, overall changes? Hyman at an 84. Stone down to an 82. Did we bring him back? I don't know. Kopitar 79. DeSmith up to an 84. Really? <laughs> Casey DeSmith. Hughes, Richie at an 80. O'Brien at an 80. Uh, Ratu down to an 85 for some unknown reason. I'm not scared about that. I don't know why he's down to an 85. But Cole's up to an 82. All right. Now we look in the system. In the system, good growth this season. Who do we see good growth from? Shen, Wilds, some other players in the 50s, 60s, Beaulieu, Walter, some elite-ish potential, Muller, uh, Miknov, Frolov, Johnson up to a 75, Misa still at a 77, but hopefully that'll be off-season growth for him. Goaltending, what about, uh, what's his name, Jansen at a 75, Uko Pekalukin at an 83 now, we'll see what happens with the goaltending. If Jones and DeSmith is our goaltending, that means uh, Uko Pekalukin is out at the draft even, even at the draft. Looking at the contracts now, thinking about what we'll be having to deal with in the offseason, we will have 19.668 million to play with, almost 20 million. Hyman wants one year at 3.4. Susie wants three years at 3.2. Of course, we can play around with 85%ing it. Mark Stone would want 3.9 or three, even 3.2 to stick around for another year. Uh, O'Brien won't be hard to sign him, probably. Probably just qualify and figure him out. Richie, same thing. Kopitar would want 2.1. McIsaac might want a little bit of money here. Yeah, McIsaac wants... Okay, well, yeah, we could definitely pay McIsaac his 1.2 or whatever that he would be uh, willing to take. Anderson Dolan wants 1.5. He's been a good trooper down there. Blake Coleman. What about Blake Coleman? He wants one... You know, probably let him walk. We're still dealing with the 2.127 and the bio penalty to Oliver Ekman Larson. Keep that in mind. So we have even more, in theory, to be playing with. So that's the main roster. We're looking at the goalies now. Goalies, we should be good to go. Muller will get his contract. Maybe Oscar Jans? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens with the goaltending. But definitely UPL will be out as his new extension kicks in. So that should be... Well, we have like over $23.5 million to play with, actually. So keep that in mind. UPL moving out will free up some more money, too. And when it comes to our unsigned players, we we'll want a goalie in this draft, by the way. But our unsigned players, Goldman will likely be on the team next year. Niskala might be on the team next year. Keep those guys in mind. Theo Gold, Theo, Tom Goldman in the end. What did he do in the in the, the Q? Seventy-two points in sixty-four games. Miko Niskala, ten goals, nineteen points over in Liga. And Cody Brown, eighty-one points in the WHL. A bit of a a bit of a decrease from the season prior. And Gustavo Kelly, by the way, he's all, yeah, 107 points from Gustavo Kelly. We'll get him signed on with his low elite potential. So, yeah, looking good for the system. We definitely want to get some goalies in the system. And that'll look, be where we look at the draft. Just keep in mind the pending free agents. As always, you want to be in the Discord server, link in the description. That's the best way to be notified when I have questions during things like free agency. If you look at the forwards in this upcoming draft, sorting by overall, not a big free agency class it looks like. Not a ton of huge names that stand out to me. So there you go for the forwards. For the defense, Hedman, Wierenski, Forsling, Brodeen, and down the list we go. And for the goalies, anybody? Knight, Jerry, Wolf, just to if for anybody who's curious. Now for the draft class. First, the draft board. So in this draft, we have projected picks. We have our first, our third, Chicago's fourth, then a fifth and sixth. So we only have first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, no second, no seventh. Our pick at 32, the last pick in the first round. If we use UPL as a draft piece, maybe, the rights to Koputar, I don't know what, Hyman, Stone. I definitely want to hear your thoughts for how this team looks next year, keeping in mind our growing prospects, Caden O'Brien, Tom Goldman especially. So some media league guys there in the draft. Medium elite here at 10 and 11. Very tempting. 
Anybody else? There's a bust there. Interesting. At 32, we could... Eh, not a lot. Maybe we trade up for the low elite power forward. Or we take this guy, Hayden Bufflin, low elite. Or then there's medium top six. There's a lot of medium top six forwards and medium top four D. Very good. Sorting by potential. I already pinned a bunch of guys. So good to see. Uh, if we look outside of the top, top guys, though, we see this medium league goalie. A couple medium league goalies will want to target. Yeah, absolutely. Lubomir Kvapil, three years away. Edward Esch, five years away. So Lubomir will be a top priority for us at 20 years old, three years away. Yeah, we'll definitely want to target him at medium league potential. Some low elites out here. I've pinned a few guys from a few months ago, but a few more, like Jim Beach. He's a gem. We'll pin him. If we look at all the guys that we have pinned, it's definitely more than we have draft picks. So we'd have to think about trying to maneuver the draft picks to make that happen. So yeah, let me know all your thoughts on that. And I think that's about it. What are we going to do with the coaching this offseason? Do we keep Galena? I think we got to keep Galena. We let Ramirez's contract expire, but I think we got to keep Galena. The problem is it's just not a very good fit. 61. I don't know. Maybe we just keep him. But maybe it'll be better if JT Miller moves out. If you don't like anyone in free agency or what, leave suggestions on just some names in general or just types of players in general. Even though we are happy with how JT Miller did in the postseason, do we want to say it's time to move on from him? He has a 15-team no-trade clause, so we could find something for him. Maybe even Kuzmenko. Who's your vote for the Con Smythe? What are you going to do with your day with the Cup? Tell me all that down here in the comments on YouTube or over on the Discord server. Link in the description. What a run, ladies and gentlemen. Your Vancouver Canucks are 2028 Stanley Cup champions. 58 years later, in the fifth year of the GM data era, I gotta tell you, it feels really good to finally get another Stanley Cup here. We haven't won one in a little bit, back since with the Penguins in NHL 23, towards the end of that series. So it feels really good to finally get another Stanley Cup. It's been too long. And as we move into a bit of a retooling phase, as some of our veterans may be moving out, we want to stay as competitive as possible and try to get another one as soon as we can. So leave all those suggestions down here, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your day with the Cup. I'll take a few days probably more than usual to make the next episode as i want to hear from everybody in terms of off-season thoughts the draft the contracts just the team ethos and philosophy moving forward itself so in the meanwhile keep an eye out for all of our live streams on mlb the show 23 our other nhl 24 franchise mode our expansion series with the san francisco starfleet breaking news and analysis in the real world of hockey we sports coming soon sporkle saturday every usually every second saturday we do sports quizzes it's a great time here on the channel we'd love to have you be a part of it I cannot wait to see what you all have to say about this episode. Having to keep this to myself is tough. I skipped a bit of the Super Bowl, but it was worth it. I just can't wait to see what the response is to this episode. So please do leave a comment with your thoughts. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already for all of those videos coming up that I just mentioned. I'll leave you off there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for your input throughout the series, especially after last episode. It's been a great run and we're not done yet. So thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the 2028 offseason where we'll have many more decisions to make.